What's up, everyone? Welcome to Let Loose Podcast, the podcast dedicated to all things Gym Leader Challenge in the Pokemon TCG. I'm Jeff Beish, I'm your host, and today we're talking grass. So, of course, we had to invite back our grass uh, connoisseur. We've got Pellet. Pellet, what's up, my friend? Hey, what is going on, man? Thank you so much for having me again. It's just so much fun. Uh, we had so much fun last time. I'm really happy to be back. I'm enjoying your videos. Each, each video is just so much fun and being able to like put face to some of the people in the community is so great. Yeah, I, I feel like we're doing a good job of that. Again, that was kind of one of the purposes of this, just to get people out there, you yourself and amongst others. You know, we're still trying to get some people on like Tyler Matthews just won a 52 person tournament at uh, Baltimore Regionals. And of course, if you don't know, he's kind of credited as the creator of Lost Circle, which is the Psychic Lost Sun deck. We're trying to get him on. We're trying to get some other people back on. I'd love to get some more European people on. Just the time frames never work. But you know, we're, we're, we're doing it. We're trying to do our best with it. And of course, we're back to grass. So we've got to have you on, Pellet. You are the grass king. You know the grass stuff. And we talked about grass decks actually on episode one back in the day because grass is kind of known as the starter deck right like when you point people to kind of the new deck and i know you have some opinions on this and we'll get to that in a second about maybe what deck you think people should start with especially when we talk real in a bit but this is usually the deck that i point to to new people so we started with that episode but i felt like that episode just didn't encompass all that grass has to offer. So here we are. We're in the weeds. We're going to be talking plant stuff, rogue decks. Let's get to it. First off, kudos to you, dude. I got, you know, usually I'm the one working on all the visuals and stuff like that. But whenever we do an episode, you are just such a more skilled visual graphic designer than I am. And you were like, hey, you need help? Here it is. Also funny interaction for us as we were starting this. I was like, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a grass episode. And you're like, yeah, here's all these resources. I was like, yeah, dude, I want you to be on it. Uh, and you're like, oh, okay. So thanks again for being on, I guess. Yeah, no, thank you. Again, thank you for, for having me. And um, I don't know. I just, if you're going to, if you want my opinion that I'm always, I'm always going to be, uh, if, if I have time, I'm, I'm going to try to always like, Try to like put my own resources and maybe like I know you like you you do the, the the visuals all the time, so I'm just giving you like a little break as well. And again, it's, I think it's fun for you to just see like what other people like put uh, in their presentations and and whatnot, so you you get to like learn and like have like a, a different style, I guess. So yeah, so, yeah. thank you for. for yeah, these are some of my favorite episodes. You know, Jimmy or Josh kind of did the same thing on our last episode. You could really see like his passion coming through the pod talking about like tank and heal decks. And so here you are doing kind of the same things. And we've already seen your passion for grass, but we get to see it here on display again. Again, just Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, uh, Venusaur. I've got a bu signed Bulbasaur to send you, by the way. Um, we'll, we'll get that to you here in the mail shortly once this hurricane calms down. Actually, no school tomorrow for us because of the hurricane, so... Oh wow! What is it? Is it category? It's already like category five, right? Four? Uh, it was like it was a three last time I checked, but like we have terrible infrastructure here in Columbia, South Carolina. Like my wife went to work; she's a nurse. Seeing you in your scrubs made me think about it. But it took her like an hour to get to work just because she had to go around so many closed streets. So we're dealing with that, but because of that, it means I get to stay up late tonight, so we can do this podcast, and uh, it can go yeah. long. Um, but back to grass. We're talking grass today, and of course, we got to start with kind of the big heavy heater headers to give us like, kind of like a baseline for what we're going to talk about in a bit, which is like the more rogue decks, the creative style decks, things that you don't typically see, but things that aren't necessarily weak, they just are different than what we're used to seeing. So we're going to look at the meta, we're going to look at the powerful decks, grass on the whole pellet, where do you feel like grass is just in terms of like we've got new printings from Stellar Crown, you know, grass hasn't gotten a lot of new stuff recently. How are you feeling about grass right now? I think that's a tough question. Um, I think the real reason why it's a, a hard question is because we, even though we're getting new people um, every every single day, you get to see a lot of the the same people. Unfortunately, they like play online. A tournament and i think it's because still are people are still afraid a little bit to like play online because they think like everyone's already like master of the 
the format, in, in my opinion. I think I, I, I've seen some of your videos on you're trying, what's it called, Twin, uh, twin Leaf, yeah, right? Twin so leaf. that's going to be a great, a great way to get like newer players once that comes up. And I, I, I saw the video. I think the, the, the developers are doing an amazing job. Haven't been able to like play it myself, but uh, I'm excited for that as well. I think Grass can really beat anything. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if um, if it wins any tournament right now because I, I really think it has the potential to like be one of the best decks uh, or best gyms in the format. Not only because it's really strong, but because the the um, surprise factor on each deck it's so broad that you know whatever you play dark. Right, and again, nothing against dark players. Like I love dark. I I, I may I. With with a bunch of friends in in, in Discord, we we made Stygian Kingdom. Um, shout outs to them, very very cool guys, and uh, we had a lot of fun and we we love dark. But usually, right, when, whenever we get to like competitive play, you will see similar dark decks. Um, and same same with a bunch of uh, 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 other gyms. But with grass, unfortunately, we're still seeing like some of the same things. But this is the point of like today's like video is to show people that hey, there's still so much hidden potential, and you'd be surprised like how many times like I, I play with friends and I bring something like random that they never seen because it's just it, it's it's just that right it's just weird because you don't get to see it, and then they immediately lose because first of all it's a best of one format right now at least here in Puerto Rico now we started uh, we we were playing best of three. But now we're we're playing best of one, and people seem to like enjoy it better just because um, you know if you, it's still DLC. So if you get a bad hand, you, you know you might lose to fairy, or you might lose to like some really cool you know text, and people really enjoy that. So bringing something to locals that's never been seen before, um, it's always gonna give you like the edge, right? So the fact that grass has a lot of these cards, it's very positive for grass. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, obviously what what the meta is right now, which is one or two decks, um, and then we're going to talk about just like weird decks or rogue decks, I should say, that either are very decent right now. I can definitely win tournaments, or the idea of the deck it's out there for like people to just kick up, just cook a little bit better, or just make it a little competitive, and the decks will be ready. Um, and then we'll finish up uh, talking about how, you know, if you're new to DLC or even if you're a, a, an older player, um, you know, it just takes one card, one random card, and you can make a deck around that card, and that's it. You have a new deck. Um, and again, it's we really we have some really good supporter Pokemon. It's not the same engine, so we have multiple engines, which is really hard. Um, whenever we talk about like other gyms, it's hard to be unique, right, or be creative when you know the engines are the same, the same over and over, and we still haven't gotten different engines for for a couple of gyms. But for grass, again, we're gonna we're gonna go into it. But we have a lot of engines. We have some really good. We have some really good Pokemon, and yes, we are missing other stuff, but. So are other gyms, you know what I mean? Like every other gym is also missing cards that they wish they had. So I guess a lot of a lot of gyms are envious of other gyms because of what they have. But I think grass shouldn't be looking to the side because they're ready for for everything. Um and again, it's it's scary because every day you wake up. There's new cards that get announced, and it only takes one or two cards to just like, break, just break completely grass. So we'll see. I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun episode today, and I'm, I'm excited to see what you think as well, because um, we got some really good people in the community like cooking some really cool stuff. Um, and whenever we talk about like competitive versus fun, I feel like the community for grass focuses more on having like fun than like being very competitive and that's also something that's really cool about like people that normal like like other people that enjoy grass as a gym you see a lot of really creative ideas and they're not really scared of 
being creative and just playing outside the box. So I'm really happy for like uh, everyone that has helped uh, make this video happen. We're gonna so we're gonna be showing like the general ideas, um, and then we're gonna be showing like the deck profiles, and then on the on the side it's gonna be like the person that created the deck. Obviously, it's impossible to like pinpoint who the first person that you know made the deck was. And I'm sorry if you know I gave an idea and maybe I gave credit to someone else. Um, uh, it's just really hard to pinpoint. So we're gonna talk about the general ideas and we're gonna give credit to that person, but we we're, I don't want to like specifically say that that person actually like is the, the creator of the deck. Just in case you know someone else they got it from someone else or we didn't I didn't talk to every single person uh, you know in in this video that we're gonna show um, and ask them if they were the, the, the original creator so yeah. so you know that's a a warning okay. yeah that's fine I think everyone knows that well I mean that's so weird to point out who created Dex and so you know we'll talk about who we credit on the screen but like you said. We can't do it. And if we do miss you, let us know, because I would love to know who's been working on stuff and give credit where credit's due. Um, and this list, we got to talk about, this is probably the Big Daddy Grass list that most people kind of point to. It's up on the Tricky Gym website. Like, this is the deck that people think of typically when they think of grass. And that is the Rillasaur deck. Of course, you got Rillaboom. You've got Venusaur. That's where the name comes from. You're doubling up energies with Venusaur. You're searching up two from your deck. you got a lot of really strong basics that can do some damage based on the grass energy attached. You've just got Grottle and Torterra. Great attacker and a compressed roll with Grottle being able to search things out. You've got Roserade, which is just like one of the top-notch support Pokemon in the game. It lets you get any card from your deck. Not quite as good as Drizzile and Inteleon, but it's about half that, which, you know, if any type had about half an Inteleon, you're pretty happy with that. And then just, you know, a slew of pretty good, strong consistency supporters. Tons of grass energy, tons of Pokemon search, because this deck likes to play from the board. And the list we got on screen is coming to us from Jordan, who uh, qualified for the Async Finals with this list. Uh, Really strong list, really interesting list. It's Rillaboom. What are your thoughts on the whole? Yeah, so it's surprising, right? Whenever I talk about, um, whenever we think about Rillasaur, or at least the, every time that I that I personally think about Rillasaur, Yoshi is the first person that comes to mind. It's the first video I think I made. Um, it's the first person that got me into the into the game. Um, so. I always give credit to Yoshi, um, and I think there's a lot of really cool things that you can still. I think what was it? I think it was uh, maybe two years ago before that video was posted. My video on, on Yoshi I could be wrong, but it was a it was a while back, and and it hasn't really changed that much, right? I don't know if Yoshi was the original creator, but he was definitely the first one to like put it out there and do really well with the deck. There's a couple of important cards that he played. That whenever I, I talked to Yoshi for a long time, um, for a while when we, we were discussing the deck, and there were a couple of cards that he said that whenever he added them, it changed the entire like uh, it, just his entire matchup. Uh, one of the, one of the cards was Wally, which Jordan didn't play, um, and he thought that it was very very strong. Um, another card that he played was Chaotic Swell. So that's another card that um, you know Jordan isn't um, isn't playing. He's playing a Lost City, which is very cool tech. Um, but I feel like Drillosaur has evolved in a way where we've gotten some really cool cards that definitely make the deck stronger. For example, I think the Power Creep. I don't know if you noticed this. Um, I'm sure you have. Um, but they're starting to give us basics with 70 HP, right? So almost every single basic, have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a thing. I think it's been pretty good on the whole because you got a couple of 60 snipe attacks that are kind of running around the format. So like having a 70 HP basic is really key. It's one of the reasons why in my Hitmon Bros list, I started playing Halucha is, you know, that extra 10 damage counters actually really matters in a lot of matchups when you're trying to snipe those important evolution basics. Yeah, exactly. And I totally agree. For example, like I'm a big, we're going to talk about like the, the, the deck that I built a while back, but uh, one of my favorite, one of the decks, the Pokemon that I've used was Jump Bluff. And, you know, that it hits 
460. So now, you know, it, it's now I have to get that muscle band. I have to get like other cards into it in order for me to get to two KOs. So not only that, but Villister always struggle with setting up, right? So the biggest problem that I've always had with Villasaur is that whenever I play the deck, it almost feels like very important cards are are um, are prized. But not only that, decks are getting faster. So so for you to now, you know, get into the rhythm and you know start from behind, it's it's a little difficult. Well what I really enjoy in today's format is that we're getting body poffins. So the ability to just play body poffins and you immediately have a rookie, you have a Bulbasaur, that right there is very strong for grass. But you also have team evolution, which is, you know, it's it's a you know it's debatable, but it, it, it could you could say that it's a better Wally, right? Um, depending on like the turn that you that you started. Um, so the deck is still the idea on the deck is really strong and um, I really like Jordan's uh, list. He doesn't even have um, uh, what's it re um, reversal energy, right? Um, so it's all base. It's all basics, right? So it, it's not like he has counter energy or anything like no like comeback mechanic or energy to like put him back into the game. It's just straight energy, like basic energies, and we're just gonna do massive damage. Um, and I I think that the reason why the deck will will continue to be like the starter grass um, for a lot of people is because even if you start slow, depending on how you build the deck, you can play the game the entire 35, 45 minutes, right? Even if you're getting your ass destroyed, um, you are definitely going to be, you know, you have a lot of Pokemon that are going to take a bunch of hits. And with the new Bamboo Glass, that's card is ridiculous you know it gets to what 300 you get to like 300 hp it's just insane you got top of wool hitting for i believe what Two two twenty 220 hits for 220 yeah. um so the deck is the deck is definitely getting stronger um my again my only issue has always been the, the fact that um it's always like a i just feel like it needs too many pieces and with like parallel city you know everyone in their in their moms is playing parallel city um Jordan, my, my guy is not even playing Chaotic Soil. He's he doesn't even care about Battle of City. Uh, but again, it's it's fun to see how Yoshi's list has evolved into like again these newer cards that has the hot come out, and it's still the most I don't want to say consistent deck, but it's definitely the fa the most famous deck um in grass, and, and you can definitely see how um why it's powerful i mean these guys have 170 hp 160 you know bamboo gas has they get to like 300 like i said um you know some people are not even now playing like shiny densex so you have a bunch of these other options now that are you know it's it's um it's really nice and and now you have things like cape so like uh you can at least like save either rillaboom or venusaur to like you know, um, keep in the game while both of them are, until both of them are on the field. And, you know, the deck plays the Revitalizer, Ordinary Rod, Super Rod. So they have a lot of recovery cards. Um, and I understand why it works. It's just, I don't know. I, I'm just, I, I wish people play something else because I know the deck is good, but I know there's a lot of other decks that are as good. So. But yeah, shout out to Jordan. Um, he did a great job on the deck profile. Uh, I think we're gonna. I'm gonna be building his um, his deck profile in our um, uh, our channel soon. And, and really cool guy. Um, and he did he did amazing. Really cool. I like the fact that he just switched one or two cards here and there and made it his own. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, I, th I think yeah. And coming back to this, I think Venusaur is a really good deck or really sore. It's a really good deck for people to start playing. Just because, again, the lines are pretty linear. Um, you don't really have to... You know, once you find out what you're searching for for your Pokemon, 
you know, it's pretty easy. Obviously, there's some nuance to like your prizing because you're playing a lot of stage two. There's some nuance to your recovery. I've seen multiple Rillasaur players run out of energy, you know, Rilla booming really fast and hard, attaching to the wrong places, having to retreat if they get gussed up. Um, you know, those sorts of things. But it's pretty straightforward on the whole. I like the deck a lot. It's kind of like a... I'd say it's like the the barrier of entry to GLC is if your deck is competitive against Rillasaur, it belongs in this format competitively. And if it struggles a bit into it, I would say it probably needs a little bit more fine tuning. So that's kind of like the first thing I always do is when I'm trying out an idea, let's put it against Rillasaur, see what it does, and then go from there. Um, another thing I'll say is these decks have gotten a lot more flexible. Back in the day, you used to see like Bridget and Gloria, like both of those cards being played. And now, we, like you mentioned, Buddy Poffin is here. Ball Guy is just like one of the best setup supporters in all of Gym Leader Challenge. You've got Evo TM to kind of get you some faster starts. So, you know, these decks have gotten, been able to get a lot more flexible. You can move away from Wally because you just have other options now so it's cool it's interesting i like the deck a lot artisan was a huge boost to it too um yeah it's strong it's in the meta the other meta deck is a deck we i haven't seen it that often recently pellet i know that you're a champion of this deck and widely credited as the creator i think i'm gonna go ahead and say you are the creator of this deck we've got you on you get the uh the added boost of that uh but you've got elusive feather Beedrill Glass Cannon here is what you're calling it. And it comes from this card, Beedrill, that's really super sweet. Since you're here, take it away. Tell us about your deck. Yeah, so the deck, whenever I made the deck, and I think we, we covered this um, in other videos before, so I'm not going to get uh, a lot into it. Um, the deck has evolved um, since I last played it. Um, and I've seen a lot of people like do really well. At least um, last year they were doing really well. Um, and I haven't really touched it, if I'm being totally honest. I haven't really touched it this year because I've been wanting to do, you know, other other things. Like I wanted to try other gyms and just see, like, how other people, like, play the, the deck. Um, and it's definitely gotten nerfed. Absolutely. So I, myself, haven't also seen a lot of people using the deck. Uh, with the new season now in, in our locals, I'm for sure going to start playing it again and see how it has uh, how it's how it's doing in the current meta. Um, I think, like I said, now that a lot of um, you know um, stage base, a lot of basics are 70 HP, that hurts the deck a lot. But I think the biggest thing that hurts the, the deck is that. With the addition of like more cards or more items that get Pokemon into your opponent's bench, like body poffins, that it's it's hard to keep up, right? Because you the whole idea of the deck is just to get like a faster start so that it, you overwhelm your opponent. But nowadays, you know, with just a body poffins and uh, a single Pokeball, your opponent already has like three Pokemon in the bench. So even if you get KO, if you KO something. You know, it might survive because you even you're you're hitting um, twice in one turn, but it's surviving because because the jump of is hitting only for sixty. Um, so the deck has to evolve a little bit. I think we're gonna have to like start playing like uh, was it Professor Kikui and um, I think there's a Giovanni that also like increases like twenty HP. Yeah, Giovanni uh, Scheme, one of my favorite cards. Yeah, what is it? There's another card. Let's see, I have it here. I forget the name. Um, just playing it. Uh, Vitality Band. Mm -hmm. Just a, uh, a worse muscle band. But again, if you get that 10 HP, it's exactly what you need to like KO two Pokemon to like get that, that, um, that head start and like put pressure. So I think the deck is definitely uh, going to evolve. I was actually working on. Because I knew we were going to talk about the deck today, and I was actually working on it yesterday. And there's so many cards that were like outdated that um, 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 I'm excited to like put newer cards. Like for example, the new um, uh, what's it called? The new uh, Ladyon. So the new Ladyon has free retreat and the ability to um, you know to to boss order something that's 90 HP or less is pretty cool, and it's got free. Uh, a free retreat so a lot of these cards are going to like come into play we might actually start to sadly add uh cards like reversal energy you know just in case your opponent 
gets a head start on you and you just need to like pull that comeback factor. So I think nowadays, even though maybe last year Elusive Feather was definitely, in my opinion, was probably the best grass deck, I think with the addition of, of not only Okie Doki, but you have Cave and now you know you have the power people of many basics being 70 HP and Poffins, you have to like re you have to like break down Elusive Feather and start it from scratch and look at the meta and see, okay, we're dealing with a lot of really good stuff that are gonna be really hard to KO. Um unless you have Torterra. So it's gonna be interesting. And again, it's gonna be fun because you get I get to sort of like replay the deck again, in my opinion, and like um uh I guess show that the deck still can do really good. So it's almost like I'm gonna be playing the deck again, trying to like show that it still, you know, has fuel and it can still do well. But it's gonna be hard. There's all it's a lot of we I saw your your video on like tanky Pokemon and I was shaking my boots. I was like, I don't know. I think we're gonna have to I think Elusive Feather might might um you know it might be done. The, uh, at the end of the day, we might actually, um, you know, have to think about the future of the deck. And maybe at its time, it was good, but the deck has just, you know, it's just improved and it's been different. But the important thing about the deck, and it's what I want to talk about, is that the engine, right? And the idea of the deck is what you can take out of it. So jump load is still a really powerful card that you can make, and we're gonna talk about like other decks that are implementing jump load into like better builds and in a better way. And you also have Beedrill, which is an amazing card because more people need to play Beedrill with their Torterra. It's just incredible. Um, I'm gonna be talking about like the grass deck that I've been using um, this year, and it, it's it it doesn't have to do with Elusive Feather at all, but it does have Beedrill and it obviously has Torterra. And the synergy on the deck is just ridiculous. Having a free retreater and it's a stage two and you know it has 103 HP. So at least I, I enjoy the fact that Beedrill is still up to the to the meta, right? Even if the deck uh, as a whole might be, you know, it might need some rework. Um, you can still take the core engine of the deck, which is what's important here, and put it into your own brass build and, and make something really, really strong. Because again, Torterra is the strongest brass card in, 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 grass, in the grass gym. So as long as Torterra is alive, Beedro is going to shine. And that's what's important in, in, in this one. Yeah. I don't really have too much to add. You know, we tried playing this build on stream one time. It did not go super well. We had very poor prizing on that particular match. Um, it's got Lost City in it, which is a card I don't necessarily like to play. You said grass players like to be a little bit more fun and chill. I don't want to take my opponent's Pokemon away. I want them to be able to recover it. So I'm a big, I think you should play Lost City in your decks. We've talked about this many times already, but I'm not going to be playing Lost City. I don't think anytime soon. But it's a cool build. It's a nice deck. I think. Like, how does this deck ever beat Whale Lord? And you said it yourself, like, tanky decks, it's just it's, almost impossible, uh, it feels like. So, it's gonna be really hard. It's gonna definitely, it's gonna be hard. And again, like, um, when I was building the deck yesterday, when I was rebuilding the deck, you have to think about what's in the meta, right? So, Whale Lord is a problem, Okie Doki uh, is a problem, and those are very tanky Pokemon. So, how do you, you know, how do you deal with them? And Whaler has been there last year. Whaler was there, not like it is now, because again, you, you have ridiculous cards. But um, you know, now you might need things like Silent Lab, right, against Colorless and against Okie Dogi, because you can hit the 130, no problem. But the Whaler is gonna be, it's gonna be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna talk about like well, as we go on, I'll explain like other things that we could do about the deck, but. A hundred percent, I agree with you. How do you beat Wayward with this deck? There's no way, you know. You have to Lost City the Whalmer. If you just jump plug yeah. it, get you know, and which you can do on turn two. If you Lost City the Whalmer, I feel like you're in a pretty good spot. If Grass got a Copycat Attacker, also reasonable, doesn't currently have it, but if it had a Copycat Attacker, this build would probably be much better because, like, 
I was playing fairy a couple weeks ago and I basically just like soloed Waylord with a mimic you. And so like, if you just have a copycat attacker and a special energy, you can get it done. So one printing, like you mentioned earlier, might just change like this entire yeah. archetype and give us. Oh, some here it is for, uh, so it's, you're hoping for a, a copycat attacker, uh, hopefully a bug. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Now, Hey, that's kind of like the two major builds and I don't play either of those builds. Um, I know a lot of people, like you mentioned, lean towards Rillasaur. I'm a big fan of like these other grass builds. I've been trying to make one of these decks that we're going to talk about happen for like my entire career. Um, really, two of the lists we're going to talk about because my my first ever list was grass, then dark, then metal, which are three types that I don't really play that much anymore. But like grass, I really, really wanted to make some cool things happen. Well, what else do we have? And we've got some really cool decks. You picked some really cool ones to talk about. I'm ready to just, just jump into it. So the first one here is coming from Bob Fred, who like I used to play all the time back in the PTCGO days. Hasn't popped up too much recently, but still got a lot of spice out there for us to kind of look at. And this deck is spicy. And I love that you picked it here. It's a single strike deck so it's got all these single strike cards in it it's got the pincer it's got the obama snow it's just got this weedle it doesn't even have the beedrill which i think is just hilarious then it's got all these scrolls that kind of have like crazy attack costs and they're just like huge damage they don't really have like much other synergy going on besides the fact that you have some single strike things happening in this deck and then you've just got like some other single strike cards you run the energy you run the stadium you've got a supporter in there too so you've just got like all these single strike cards about and then you have this sun flora and once you see this sun flora everything kind of starts to make sense so the sunflower's solar power attack says during your next turn ignore all energy cost of grass and fire well hey these scrolls have those attack cost the scroll of piercing which is the fire double colorless one uh, does 120 damage straight up and isn't affected by weakness or resistance or any effect so it's kind of like a um, shred attack um, but you don't have to pay that fire cost if you sun floored previously you could just use dc to get it going there again this other scroll over here it's called the Scroll of the Fanged Dragon. It's got like a really weird energy cross too, and it doesn't get discounted any, but it does 300 for five. So you're playing Reversal, hoping that that will kind of get you there with that scroll as well. And then the last scroll here, which again, it's just really, really funny, but really, really kind of cool to see in a deck. It's the Scroll of Furious Anger, and it does 10 plus 10 more damage uh, for each damage counter on the Pokemon that's attacking. So if you can absorb damage on like, you know, one of your other Pokemon, your Pinsir, your Obama Snow, you can dis out tons of damage with these scrolls. And you can see the idea that Bob Fred had. He had an idea in mind. He wanted to play this deck. And here it is. What are your thoughts, Spellet? I think this is hilarious, right? Because I come from, so so one of my favorite grass Pokemon is, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be saying my favorite grass Pokemon a lot because I really enjoy them. But it's Beedrill, right? So, but I was, I got to, uh, people got to know me in the community for playing the Beedrill engine. So, whenever I saw Boss Fred's list, it was hilarious because he didn't play Beedrill, but he played Weedle, which is super cool. Not only that, but um, if you look at the, first of all, Boss Fred has been recently playing because you're looking at newer cards. There's Reversal Energy, there's some, there's some newer sort of cards here, right? There's Body Poffins. So, he's updating the list <laughs> slowly. Um, and there's some really, as you get into the deck, there's some definitely cards that I would add and I would switch up. And uh, but it's scary to think that if you know, if single strike ever comes uh, out, or we can just discard single strike for now and just talk about the sun floor. And this can be scary because we have a lot of new TMs coming up. So if there is some newer TMs where they do a bunch of spread damage. That's going to be very scary in this deck, right? Because all you need to do is attack with some flora. And then it's not like you get to um, it's not like you get to attack with some flora and then like pick a Pokemon and then that Pokemon will attack next turn. It's any Pokemon 
So you there's 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 nothing your opponent literally nothing your opponent can do now not that I'm just thinking here on the top of my head that they can do about what's coming next, right? So if there ever if there's ever a TM that you know that does a lot of spread damage um to something like um I don't know something similar to um the Kyogre that was banned that just did like a bunch of like spread damage to 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 your opponent's bench or something crazy like the rapid strike starmy so if there was a tm like that where it just needed like a bunch of like really weird energies of like every single typing let's say and you need to like four or five or six different ones you know it can happen you literally only have to like do use some flora with a double colorless it's not like it just it's not like it's all like grass or like grass and a colorless it's, it's just colorless right so all you have to do is attack with some flora and then any pokemon can just do a lot of damage if it's 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 scary with with spread damage because you're not KOing anything so as that so far is probably going to get KO'd or whatever's going to get KO'd, and then it's going to activate things like the reversal, the counter, right? You know, Bob has Lana's rod, which is super scary. It's just sitting there, people might not even look, be looking at it, but it gets you a Pokemon and it gets you a TM, right? And it's especially scary in grass because you got things like you said in your in your lap podcast, uh, Revitalizer is one of the strongest recovery cards, it just gets you. To uh, to grass Pokemon from your from your uh, from your Discord pile, so it's a funny deck, and on top of everything, you don't even have to play it. Torterra is scary by itself. Like I I, I played one of my uh, my good friends uh, Jose Burgos uh, this week. He's a huge grass fan, just like me, and we're uh, that's that's my partner, and like discussing like all these really cool ideas. And I, he was playing something other than grass, and I was playing uh, one of the decks that I'm going to showcase later. And that particular matchup, I didn't, because I told him I have something spicy that I want to show you. And I never got to show him because I just played Torterra like turn two or three, and I just got my six prizes. So even if your spiciness doesn't work out in this deck, right, you still have a Torterra with a little. Uh, uh, Levani, Levini, mm -hmm. and a Krikatoon that is giving your Torterra massive amounts of of HP, um, and that itself is just scary, right? You can just win with that. Everything else is just extra, and that's what's really cool about Grass that you can splash some really cool Pokemon on like maybe other gyms, and it could do really well because you still have to deal with things that are very strong and very scary. And it's not only the Torterra, in this case, he has the Heracross and the Pinsir and the Abomas now, which might not be great, but let's just, if he, uh, uh, he's obviously doing it for the meme and for the single strike theme, but let's just say that he just plays something like there's a Heracross that um, if you uh, have a stage two in field for two energies, it does 120 damage, right? So you're increasing the HP of that Heracross for a lot. Um, and you can then start playing other basics and maybe play things like, um, what is it, uh, Ether Paradise, right? Which also, like, the, um, I think you get, like, 30 resistance on like, damage, right? So you, so all of a sudden, you, you're not really playing something too crazy, but then it, it's very scary. And these are basics, which are receiving, you know, they're, they're tanking a lot of damage. So it's really cool to, like, take this idea, which just sounds off the walls, but then the more you look at the deck, even if the, the deck doesn't really work out and it just doesn't do anything, you still have to like watch out for like things that are very scary and very strong. I mean, but let's talk about the best thing about the deck is like your Weedle just has infinite KO power. Like you could throw that 300 damage uh, single strike uh tool onto this Weedle and all of a sudden your opponent's losing to the one of the worst both Pokemon in the game, right? Like it's just it's hilarious. It's for the memes, but it's just so great. And you can see like even with the Weedle, like the Weedle has hair across, you see the hair across in the deck. Like you can see that Bob Fred is just playing his favorites. And that's what I love about Gym Leader Challenge. And with these grass rogue decks, that's what I want to see, you know? 
Like, sure, they, they can all be competitive in some capacity, but like, let's let's play our favorites, let's win with our favorites, and that's what we've got on display here. All right, next deck is a absolute menace, an absolute menace, and this is Egg Mill. And if you guys haven't played against Egg Mill, congratulations, you've won because this deck is pretty brutal to play against and it's interesting it's a lock deck um and it can it can take prizes that can win the game which is something i really respect from control decks but you've got egg mill here and basically you've got the execute that if it's in your discard pile you can pop it back to your hand and then it evolves into blockade executor which can uh, basically does 10 damage and it stops your opponent from being able to play supporter cards from his or her hand. Which we know is just like the most busted thing to do in Jupiter Challenge is go second and play a supporter. So this executor can stop your opponent from playing supporters. And again, it's not something they can like escape rope to get Wobbuffet out of the active and use abilities again. Like it's an effective an attack. So like it's not going away. And if you can just do this on repeat, you know, you are looking in a pretty good spot. Well, pair that with this Venomoth, which just basically is just pretty annoying too. Again, one energy, it does 30 damage. And then during the turn, uh, the following turn, not only is your opponent's active confused, but they can't play any item cards. So you can like, you know, Venomoth early to stop your opponent from like playing balls and then go Executor late to like stop your opponent from really playing those in-game supporters that are going to catch them up. Again, you're kind of stalling the game. You've got Vileplume here, too, that also stops items being played from hand. You've got Rabska to help uh, protect your bench from uh, damage effects or damage. And then you've also got Sazbeck to help you draw. Roserade as a consistency piece. And, of course, Grottle to search out pieces with Torterra. You've got the typical control suite. You've got Plumeria. You've got Team Flare Grunt. You've got Team Rocket's Handiwork. Uh, you've got Team Yell, uh, was it Team Yell's Cheer, which just gets you resources back so that you can keep doing these same things over and over again. Tool Jammer. It's just like it's a control deck, but it's a control deck that just kind of goes above and beyond with these effects of attacks. <sighs> it's tough to play against, but it is good. Pellet, what are your thoughts on this? And of course, I got to give credit to my boy Ghouls. Ghouls has been working on this deck. It is good. Yeah, Gould is an uh, incredible uh, big builder. He he's like you and me. So he, he he loves. He he's not afraid to like think outside the box. Um, and there's been many times in in our three gen Discord, uh, at least the the, 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 the grass one, um, where people have played his deck and they has they they have straight up told him like, dude, I have no idea what I'm doing how i i can't get this deck to work and each time it feels like he has an answer for everything and it's very well explained so you can see how not only is this like you were saying is this deck really hard to play against it's also very hard to play so you also have to take your time and each piece has its own thing that's very important so Let's if we are again, you did a really good job breaking it down. I will also want to talk about like a couple of things that are very important here. Like for example, the Bible that I know you, you you love, very scary. I love, I absolutely love this new card. I have actually started playing it in one of my decks uh, myself, which is the Pokemon League um, Stadium. What an amazing card! Such an amazing card. Uh, I played it against my friends, and they looked at it looked at it again you know <laughs> they didn't know what 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 the card was they didn't know the card existed very underrated i feel like we're gonna see more people play the card you're stopping spirit tomb you're, stop, you're stopping gus lord you're stopping hoopa you're stopping now in the dark uh matchup you know in fire ente shiu um moltres you got um cast form there's so you, you keep thinking about gyms and colorless, everything is basic. So uh, in the fighting matchup, Himbos is one of the most um, you know played um, uh, decks in the fighting gym. 
they're mostly basics. Okie dokie, it's also basic. So whenever you so you keep looking at the meta and you're like, this card is just amazing. What the so it just buying you turns. I played it against a couple of my friends and they just didn't have a stadium. They didn't have they, not only did they not have a stadium, they didn't want to waste their their blower on it. <laughs> so they're like, I know you play Cape, at least in my build, but he's also playing Cape in, in his build. And they they just didn't want to waste it on, on this card because they had stadiums, they were hoping they would get it, and it just buys you one turn, two turns, three turns sometimes. But what's crazy about this deck, right? And sorry if I'm um, mentioning the thing over and over. He plays Caitlyn and Cynthia and Lucene. So I think he's coming back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's hilarious. And I think it's brilliant. Um, and you look at the Pokemon lineup, you know, um, you're not spreading him. So he, he's playing uh, Morovska, so you're not spreading him. He also has... Consistency cards um, like um, the Roserade and uh, Saucebuck uh, for, I think this is the one, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one that draws your card uh, each turn. Um, he's now wasting cards in his hand because he's got to execute, right? So things like Ultra Ball, things like um, Quick Ball. Does he have Quick Ball? Does he play Quick Ball? I don't see a quick ball on the list. Just Ultra Ball looks like it's the only discard ball. Ultra Ball, you're playing Guzman Hala, you know, you're playing Caitlyn and Cynthia. So you have other cards that you're discarding, and you're not discarding that many. You're playing Enhanced Hammer. So it's a very control list, and then he plays for Terra, right? Which is scary. We would talk about Terra over and over again. It's a card that when it, when it gets there, it's going to take multiple prices. And the fact that if you K in this deck particularly, if you KO the Torterra, let's say you KO the Torterra, he has so many cards to just win turns. That Torterra for sure is coming back. Guarantee it. Like there's no way that Torterra is, is staying dead. So you have to deal with another Torterra again. And you have to play the Torterra, you know. Probably without playing either items or supporters, and that's going to be a pain. So, shout outs to Ghouls. I mean, just an amazing deck. I actually, I can't wait to see him in action, like, like actually play the deck. I'm not crazy enough to play this deck. I don't think I have like the mental stability to play this deck because the more and more I look at it, it just feels very scary to play and very scary to play again. Yeah. It's definitely a deck that can games can go long. I think they played his async game, and I think his async game went to like it was like multiple hours long for a best of three. And we we might have had to change some of the rules for how async games worked because no one wants to be playing, uh, you know, an open ended game for three or four hours. It just so happened that the person he was playing against was playing to like every single out that they had. They did have outs. I think they probably would have conceded if it was, you know, a timed match to a certain degree, but you know, playing to every single out did make those games go a little bit longer, but it, it is massive. This deck, like you said, scary to play, scary to play against. And it does have some pretty like, interesting things that if you don't like notice them right away like it's going to be a while for you to take notice like for example executor and venomoth both do damage but in a lock style decks typically you don't want to take ko's because you're maybe not trying to win the game you're not trying to activate like teammates or something else so you see double turbo energy like you're not you don't see twin or DCE, you see double turbo, because if you put a double turbo on the executor, you're never doing damage, so you're never having to worry about taking that KO. And I didn't so, notice that at yeah. all. <laughs> so it, it's just like these interesting kind of niche things that like, you know, the more you play the deck, the more you play against the deck, you get to notice. And you can tell like, you have to have just such a huge knowledge of what your opponent's decks are trying to do to play a deck like this, in order to know that like, you have to play the double turbo on the executor to stop the KO. It it's cool. It's fun. You mentioned Pokemon League headquarters, which makes attacks, you know, one more for basic Pokemon. Uh, you know, that card you can, is also a menace. So this deck is maybe not fun is the right word. In fact, I might say this is the fun police 
I think the one time I played against it, Ghouls was playing it and expertly piloted it and had Executor on turn two. And I was playing kind of my meme deck. Krabby's one of my favorites. So you guys can see in my little plush back here. Uh, but he had Razka up and I was playing Aqua Shower Krabby that does, I think, 10 to everything. Well, Executor just has resistance to water. And then Rabska stops all damage to the bench. And then it has two retreat costs. And I couldn't play any supporters. So, like, it was just the worst the worst game ever. I think we got, like, five turns in. I was like, you know what, Ghouls? You got it. Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yeah, the, dude, that, that's crazy. I actually I didn't even notice that. Um, I only know that I, because of Z-Man. Z-Man played, put that in his uh, fairy list. It might have been Wither Gaming, too. I know there's a couple of control gamers out there that put DTE in their list to specifically not KO Pokemon. Very crazy. But I'm really excited to talk about this next list because I know you've been working really hard um, with this list. It's funny enough because um, once uh, Weaver uh, built his Leviathan deck, I feel like everyone, like a bunch of us in the, in the grass fans, Sort of like our light bulb went up and saying like, hey, like if he did this with Waylord, maybe we could do it with with uh, with Torterra. Uh, so I remember like starting to cook and I saw you doing the same thing. I was like, nah, dude, like I'm gonna. <laughs> I got so many other projects. I was gonna let him have it, and you already have some some really great ideas. So I'm like, I'm not even gonna like try. And I personally play the deck. It's amazing. The only card that I, unfortunately, I don't have, so I haven't been able to like make your deck profile, which is coming up. I already, uh, I have a friend that's gonna get it. It's the recycle energy. But what an amazing build! Like, I'm not, I'm not even pulling your leg. This is an amazing build, and I just want to give you thanks because my favorite starter, my favorite grass starter, is Meganium, and I was always, I was. Unfortunately, I was very negative towards the card. I was like, this card is such, it's just so garbage. And I wish it was better, but it is not. And uh, you also play Oddish. And one of my favorite Oddishes is the one from the series, uh, Ava's Oddish, which I'm very sad that you didn't play. Uh, I played it in my build. Um, but it's just so cool because you got so many really interesting Pokemon like the Arboliva, which is also really cool. You play the Vile Plume, the Meganium. Dude, talk about the list because I really want to see like what was going through your mind and how difficult it was because I I have to say, you made this list rather for me it felt like you made it rather quickly. You you knew what you were doing and you tested some some you know, some um, some um, uh, some builds, but then you had it in almost no time. So you did an amazing job. Like what? What? Talk of, talk about the the builds. It's just so good. Yeah. So first off, I got to say my first ever grass deck was a Meganium deck. So I have to say that the entire time I've been playing Gym Leader Challenge, I have been trying to make Meganium work. And I like the first thing I did, of course, is I went on YouTube, searched in like Meganium Gym Leader Challenge, and there's like a Flex Daddy video, and it was playing Hair Cross with the, the Guts ability, and I was like, oh yes, this is it. And I played the deck, and I was like, this is not it. This is not it. And so I kind of put Meganium to the side, and the previous trainer that we just talked about, Ghouls, he actually kind of came up with a list that was more of a Meganium attacking list because Meganium lists previously were a little bit more controlling in the way that they could go about things. And so like he really like ignited the like what I wanted to do with Meganium again because I was getting bored of Rillasaur. I had tried Grass Spread. It wasn't working. And I just want to play my favorites, right? And like you, like Chikorita is my favorite starter of all time. It's not a good Pokemon, but it is a great design in my opinion. I love everything about Chikorita, Bayleaf, and Meganium. So how can you make it work? And so like we'd been like Ghouls and I were kind of like back and forth. Um, I really wanted to try the Arboliva. I, I've told this story like a bajillion times, but my son's name is Oliver, and we used to call him Small Oliver, Smoliver. And of course, Sm oh, Small of Smoliver came out, and I was like, I gotta play Smoliver for Smoliver, 
right? Like I had to do it. So how could we make that work? And then just like new cards kept getting printed that just made a ton of sense. Luxurious Cape got printed, uh, which just makes Torterra a house. Or better yet, you can slap it on your Meganium, who just evolves all your basics immediately into stage twos. Um, and you can just continuously do this over while having a bit of protection. Well, as we were kind of like testing the bruise, we found that like, if your luxurious cape gets field blowered, you are in kind of rough shape, especially if meganium goes down. So how can you stop your luxurious cape from getting field blowered? Because if you get the luxurious cape on meganium and you have Grottle and Torterra up, it's just basically like you win the game because you can just Arbeliva over and over and over again to heal whatever you need to heal. Um, because like Ghoul's last list, we are playing Cynthia and Caitlyn. We're playing Lusamine. Um, at least one iteration of my list was playing Lusamine. I'm not sure if this one does too, but you're playing Cynthia and Caitlyn so you can get back Professor Turo's to consistently scoop up net the Arboliva and instantly play it again over and over again. So, like, that was kind of, like, what was going through my head as I was building this list. So, I know you said it came together rather quickly, but, like, this version of this deck it took over a year um, wow. to, to get to this spot. Like, Weeder and I had been working on it, like, before this. He had, like, a spread version of it that he was trying, and, like, I was having a more attack-based version. Then Ghouls had his toolbox version. Like, all three of us were kind of talking about this deck. And then, you know, I just I happened to be like, let's put this list together. One, like, one of my locals, if this deck gets going, it's impossible to beat. It can struggle into faster decks, which is really kind of the big issue that it can have. But you've got tools to get going. Like, if you get Buddy Poff and Turbo Energizer on turn one, it's just game over for your opponents recently. And then a lot of, like, the newer additions, like Recycle Energy. Like, how did I not think of Recycle Energy at the beginning? Like, you just plop Recycle Energy on Torterra, and it pops back to hand. And then you can use the Sceptile to attach the energy and heal. Oh, I just love it. It's so much synergy. Um, so, yeah, this is my favorite deck. Like, without a doubt. Like, I would play this tomorrow if there was a 1K at full group games. I would drive up to Akron, Ohio. I would play this deck. No, it's very strong. Um, I was, I was, like I said, I, I, I had the... Um, you know, I was able to play this deck a little while ago uh, when you sent it to me, and it was it was just really strong. The ability to, if your Torterra gets KO'd with the Meganium, just to like, be able to just play Torterra again so quickly, is just very frustrating for the opponent because, uh, for, yay! Like I I was able to like get rid of the Torterra, and then in my turn I'm like, all right, Torterra again, the Vitalizer and Torterra again, or I play. You play, um, what's it called, like, um, Lana's, uh, the new Lana, right? Uh, Lana's A, yeah. Yeah, you get, like, three, it's like a, it's like a Super Rod, right? Yeah, it's a Super Rod Pokemon or Grass back to hand as a support. Exactly. So you, you, can, yeah. you can play it if you're item locked, because you do item lock yourself with a Vileplume. Very strong. So, do props to you for this build. It's just very fun. And I think the, the thing that I enjoy most about the deck is that it's just different from everything else. So, I really enjoy that. But also, you have different routes. So, you can either play, you know, your boss route, or you can play the lock route, or you can put them together and just... It's like an auto scoop for your opponent. Like, there's no way he's being that. There's absolutely no way. Yeah. So, great, great build. Great Thank build. you. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I gotta give a shout out to Ghouls, Weeder, working on the list with me. A lot of different people made this list happen. So, I'm not gonna take all the credit for it, but like, I don't, I don't know anyone else who's playing our Believer. That's that's from my son. <laughs> Well, all right. The next build is from you, Pellet. This is an interesting build. I know Victory Bell is one of your favorites. And so seeing that in this list is pretty interesting. You want to talk us through kind of your Poison Snipe Brew? Yeah, so we still have a lot of other decks that we want to talk about. So I don't really want to like uh, talk too much into this build. Because this is basically, so once I finish Elusive Feather... I tried just doing like other variations and just testing other things out because the original idea was to uh, make a, a big tree build. Deck. So big tree build. So I have I have a lot of really good. I have a, a lot of Pokemon that I've enjoyed that I enjoy. Like for example, the, the Meganium and the, the um, Beedrill. 
But my favorite brass type of all time is Big Trail. Um, and what I really enjoy about um, uh, Poison and what I really had for and Lucy Feather, I sort of was able to like put everything together. And whenever I played the deck, which was, again, it's a variation of um, Lucy Feather, it almost felt like it was a stronger deck than Lucy Feather because it had more control. And it wasn't so linear as just attach and hit. It was more of it has the ability to KO with, with the Bell Sprout. And it has the ability to boss order every single turn, which is ridiculous. Uh, has the ability to to snipe uh, into the back. So so things like I said, weaknesses that the deck had um, you know have um, weakness the deck had because of the new format, like things being seventy HP or just things being like more you know just having a higher HP. Like for example, like like you said, the whaler. Or like, what are we doing in those scenarios? This is sort of like the answer. So this is the version that i am that i currently fixed it uh yesterday so whenever i was talking about Lucy feather i was actually talking about this variation which is the one that i'm currently playing which is dangerous mucus um and just the ability to poison something or snipe something and like you said like i can uh play the victory bell and like get the the um the whalemer and just ko it or just basically snipe things that I know are gonna become a problem uh, in the long run, it's just better. It just makes the deck a lot better. And right now I'm probably gonna leave Elusive Feather um, in you know in the back for a while. And I'm gonna be trying the, the version that I'm gonna be playing is gonna be this one. Uh, unless a new Big Two Bell comes out that is just completely different and I'll, I'll try to make a list of, um, off of him. But um, this is again like like uh, what I wanted to like mention was this is the build that I think has the potential to replace the Lucy Feather because again it can snipe um, you know you have things like Silent Lab like I said earlier it's one of the things that we're gonna we're gonna add we're definitely probably gonna have reversal energy because it has synergy with B drill um, with B drill uh, the ability to play like Peony and like cards that get you exactly what you need. In those beginning turns, is very important because you can again you could uh, you could dunk, but you can also snipe things that are very important or boss order things that are gonna get stuck there for you then to like slowly snipe away things. And because they're all almost like stage, uh, there's a lot of really good stage ones that you can do that. The cricket tune, this cricket tune particularly has the ability to spread, so you can boss order something and do spread damage over and over. And so it has a lot of really good potential. Um, and I think it's just gonna again, it's gonna get better. Like I said, with the new Lady on, you have things like the Big Trill, you have things like the uh, Venomoth, you have things like the, the Lady on. So you have a lot of things that are gonna be very uh, snipey in a way. So you're gonna be able to hit things that you know are gonna be the ones that are going to control your opponent's tempo. So for example, Waver, like you were saying. Whaler's not going to be like the main issue. You are going to want to hit things that make Whaler good. So you're going to hit that Frost Mob. You're going to be, you're going to hit that artillery. You're going to hit those things that are going to get KO'd. And it's going to be really hard for your opponent, even if it's just Whaler out there. That Whaler is going to be in a lot of trouble because your opponent's going to want to like waste things to like bring back those uh, Pokemon that got KO'd. And I'm just going to KO them again. Um, so then we have to implement things like um um you know special hammer or yeah, sorry enhanced hammer to like get rid of those reversals and those special energies that um that the special whales love to play like the titan and waylord so so i think this is the right approach that um that elusive feather is gonna be moving um further into the future and and yeah i've, I've been enjoying it because i get to play my favorite grass pokemon of all time so so yeah, definitely this is the deck, not this deck specifically, the one that you're seeing on the screen, but this is going to be the variation of the deck that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna keep working on to 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 bring to my locals and get my matches. Yeah. I love this list because you know, one of the best things I think in all of Gym Winter Challenge is a snipe attack to the bench on turn two. 
it's just shown itself to be really strong. You know, we've seen it with Hitmon Bros. Um, you know, Hitmon Lee being able to do 90 and take out a key support Pokemon. Recently, Raging Bolt is a card I'm really enjoying in Dragon, and it scales up to 90 damage if you have three energy on it, which is DDE plus one of their attachments. So doing 90 to the bench on turn two has been really good there too. So this Venomoth having that same ability, again, being a stage one, costing one, needing Weeping Bell maybe to have evolved that turn, maybe is a little um what's the word i'm looking for here like uh it, like all the things need to come together for it to happen but can't just like imagining that perfect assassin flight on turn two taking care of a, a you know a sobble or a drizzle just like it's one of the best things before they can get that intellion off it's just so great um looking at the list now and just thinking about the iteration you talked about one of my favorite cards that i never really get to play is loopy lasso venusaur which I feel like plays really well into this list. You know, you flip a coin. If it's heads, you get to boss something and poison it. Was that a card that you considered for this list? I know it's a stage two, but... Yeah, no, definitely. Not. Absolutely. So the, the, the biggest problem with the, with the card is that it's not being turned out because I would have to take out the, the lineup. So in theory, more competitively, probably the Venus will be the right choice. Um, but also the fact that this lineup has both the boss order factor, but it also has the weeping bell factter. And because you play things like Scoop of Net, you have synergy between Rosary, Weeping Bell, and the Low Kick. So you have multiple cards where that Scoop of Net becomes really strong. Because you have multiple cards you want to bring back into your hand to have those effects. Mm -hmm. And again, you have things to like get to search that toxic laser. Mm -hmm. So you have the greens, you have um you know, the Peony, you have the Arden. So nowadays we have a lot of cards that get you that exact item. And all you need is that and Venomoth. Um, not only that, but Venomoth itself uh, has an attack that's called Poison Powder. So you can, you can poison your opponent, um, do 30 damage with the poison that's 40. And with the muscle, if you if you give them a muscle button that's 60, so you could KO something and then you know they don't have ihan they don't have um, teammates for the next turn so so very cool there's a little details that you could do into follow up plus obviously it has free retreat so it, it it goes into play with that um you know elusive um feather theme that goes really well but definitely yeah the venusaur is a, is a great idea for those people right that that prefer venusaur or venusaur is their favorite pokemon which is most of the people that I met, they, 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 Venusaur is one of their favorites. You can definitely like test it out yourself and switch me to real for Venusaur and see how it goes. Yeah, cool, awesome. Just something to point out. I, I like this build a lot, and I, I agree with you, kind of what you're saying. If Elusive Feather is going to evolve, going into this direction seems great. Elusive Feather was really good about being disruptive to the active. And now that those numbers you mentioned might not be good enough, well, you can be disruptive to the bench in a different capacity, and your poison is just like a continuous muscle band, if you think about it, right? You're doing 10 damage, they pass it back, it's another 20. So it's another way to like, you know, kind of boost that damage output if you need to, and also have some synergy with some other cards that you're playing. So I like this build a lot. I think I'm going to have to put it together now. <laughs> All right, another deck here. Um, which is really cool deck. This is uh, Tropical Rainbow. It's got a Lowland Executor in the deck. Um, this is a really cool deck. So I know a lot of people have been trying out some similar builds to this. I think I've even seen a build that's playing this Alolan Executor, and it's playing what's the the berry the berry snail Pokemon called? That's like kind of a meme. Shuckle, Shuckle. It's playing the Shuckle. Uh, in the deck. And so there's a couple of different variations of this running around. Uh, we are showing you Dead Maniacs build. And this is a really, really cool build. Again, it's got the Rainbow Energy Suite down here. And then it's got this Alolan Executor, whose Tropical Shake Attack does 20 plus 20 more damage for each basic energy card in your discard pile. Uh, I mean, that's just one grass energy is the cost, but you can't do more than 100. And so it is capped to a certain degree, but you do get to play some of these other synergies, um, cards that have to deal with other special energies. So you've got this new Galvantula that has 
If it has a lightning energy, it does 80 more damage. So it's hitting 130, and then attacks used by this Pokemon do 50 more to your opponent's active that has an ability. So this could potentially do 180 damage if it does have that lightning energy attached. You've got the Scovelion that does more damage if it has a fire energy attached. You've got Lorantis to help boost by 20. You've got Torterra, every list does. Uh, and yeah. then you, you've got this really cool Buzz Swole that uh, can heal itself while doing some big damage because it does 20 more damage for each prize that your opponent has taken. So these lists are really cool. You see that you get to play fairy energy in this list. So if you're trying to make fairy happen in Gym Leader Challenge, this might be one of the ways you do it. But Palette, what are you thinking about this Alolan Executor Tropical Rainbow Beatdown build? I think it's pretty nice. I think Dead Maniac is one of I think one of the strongest deck builders right now that we have in 2024. Um, he has built some really nice decks. Um, we feature a light metal in our in our um, our uh, YouTube for a while back, and he has done some everything he builds works. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if that this deck does really well. The fact that it has synergy with a bunch of cards, like for example. Like you said, like uh, Cacturn with the Dark Energy, you have the Skull Villain for, with the, um, I think that's Blind Energy, uh, and the Galvantula with the Compound Eyes and the Electric Energy. I think it's pretty cool. Would I say it's worth it? Probably not, um, but it's just really fun and different. Uh, because again, if if this Alola Executor was a little better, then maybe. But the fact that you can't add more than 100 damage sort of like kills it for me. It personally, right? This is my this is just my opinion. Um, but that being said, it's cool because it's just something different. It has 160 HP for a stage one, which is incredibly strong. Um, and you get to you know it, it has synergy with a bunch of with a bunch of cards, including Torterra, right? Because you can use the Torterra for a grass and a colorless, so you can give that Torterra fighting, fire, dark, electric, doesn't matter. You're going to be able to hit with it, which is super nice. Um, and this deck, I think, is, is going to get better. Um, I think there's going to be more and more bugs. They might play like Volcarona in the future, or they might play like another Skull Villain, or, you know, um, I think there's going to be more and more cards uh, that are going to get better. Um, into this deck and it's just gonna be a, a nice a nice build very aggressive build it's a beat down deck like you just want to attach and attack um and you want to get those energies in your in your discard uh so i think this deck again it's one of those decks where in the future if we ever get something that has to do with like rainbow as well or we get some similar effect like a low on executor i think it's just what the deck it will need especially if it's a basic for the deck to like shine a little better but it's just a very pretty deck that you get to use a lot of your favorite pokemon um and it was i think it's very well made uh, i think there's it's one of those builds where a bunch there's a lot of other people trying to build rainbow i tried myself i tried with a some with a specific sonflora from a pre-release i don't know what the pre-release was was it tempest something I don't remember, but basically with two colorless, you can discard like uh, energies and it does something like 70 HP per card discarded. So I tried using it and it didn't really work out, but um, but Frost of the Maniac, he's a great deck builder. And I, I think that the, I think that the list is just fun. And again, it has Sorterra. So if it has Sorterra, in my opinion, it can win. So 10 out of 10. Yeah, yeah. Love this build too. Again, you know, speaking about Dead Maniac here, you know, Light Metal is the build that he is most associated with. There's a CBW article about it. Check it out too. And then on top of that, he's been working on this Electros build. And if you guys don't know, there's an Electros that comes into play. If you have four energy on the battlefield, it just plops down as a stage two onto your bench, and then all the energy gets attached to it. And so you can just be attacking in with this Electros that does reasonable damage. Um, and it used to get play in nuzzle builds. I think Dead Maniac has moved away from the nuzzlers, and it's a little bit different of a deck now. But that's another build that I'm going to credit to him too, um, beyond this one that we're showing you guys on screen. 
All right, Pella, another build from you. And I've seen a lot of people trying to work with this idea. You know, I've seen Weeder try to get this to work. We played one on stream with a similar idea. I've seen Z-Man Cuddles try to make this build work. And of course, in our last set, we had the festival lead ability kind of spoiled with the festival grounds stadium and of course you've got the boom boom groove thwacky here that all kind of synergize to what together basically diplin says if you have festival lead in play you can attack twice with an attack that it has do the wave which is a callback to base set wigglytuff does 20 times the amount of damage you have on your bench pokemon so you can do 100 twice which is pretty good it's a better rate than the jump fluff but of course you're also playing the jump fluff up there thwacky is pretty cool basically thwacky says if you have diplin because diplin's really the only the grass book one you have in the active you can just search your deck for a card and put it in your hand so with these two cards situated the way they need to be it's just roserade on demand and of course, because you're playing Thwacky, you got to play the Voltage Beat Rillaboom, of course. And then Jump Fluff, like we said, is another double attacker. You've got the signature Pellet Beedrill here. And of course, Torterra, plus that new Ledeon you were talking about. This deck seems super sick. How's it been testing for you? So, so this deck uh, came about because uh, in our locals, uh, one of the newer players was looking at things online and like what he's uh he's a uh, he's playing grass and he started with <laughs> he started with real sword and after playing with a bunch of us which we obviously been playing for a while he just couldn't keep up like the deck was um just very slow for him and then he started like adding things and it just got worse because again when, when you're starting everything is difficult because you are playing against players that you know, already w went through that. So you're trying to like implement something new, but we already, you know, been there, done that. So it was hard for him. So I tried helping him out. And then he found this list online about a player that did really well and, and that it was winning a bunch of tournaments and uh, it was called Elusive Feather. And I was like, yep, that, that's my build. And um, we he couldn't believe that it was actually me. So then we actually got into the deck. And he started like sort of like building a mixture of like elusive feather and then festival groove um because he already had like things like the rilla boom because he had already rilla sword um and he originally made yoshi's list so he played sort of like evil jungle which is very similar but it plays for terra and rilla boom and venusaur and all that and then he started mixing it with elusive feather so he sort of like put all like all of them like together and i started like helping him out and then we came out with like this list this list looks a little different um but this is the one that i played with friends and it was the one that was giving me like good um good results um and it was it was good the the reason why at the beginning i was doing i wasn't doing really well with the deck was because i thought that dripling needed um uh you needed to have all of your bench filled for dripling to work so I was like, I don't know why people should play this. Like this is this is probably not not reasonable or it's not just it's not gonna happen. Um and then I read the card and I was like, okay, this card is a lot better than I thought it was. Um and and again, we started playing um uh, here in, in this build, you can start like looking at like the little things that I we talked about, like in Lucid Feather and Dangerous Mucus. Where we have things like the uh, the enhanced hammer, and we have the silent lab, and in our local that has worked really well. Um, even things like the waylord, um, because you have things like the talkie where it gets you, like you don't really need those right anymore. Uh, in this build, particularly, you get to uh, get exactly the cards that you need for to just you know, if you see the waylord, you just bring it back up and you just KO it immediately. Um, so you have multiple ways to um, not let the Waylord set up, if that's the case, right? But even if it sets up, the you know Dripling can do some crazy amount of damage. Um, so even if it takes like two, right? Even if it takes like two uh, two hits, you can you know you you get uh, rid of the Waylord rather quickly. But the strongest thing about the deck is the ability to KO things so fast, right? So in theory, in two turns, you can get four prices. 
Um, and that's what the consistency and speed of the deck is what makes the deck shine. So in a way, it's um, shout outs to, to Justin, right? Because he's the, the one that started um, uh, building the list. But um, uh, I asked him for his list, but his, he said that it, it wasn't ready. It wasn't going to be ready for today. So that's why I, I'm showing my list. But a lot of this came from him. Um, and, and yeah, the deck has been working really well. And, and like I said, it, 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 it has the ability to deal with everything. We have a lot of dark players in our, in our locals. And, you know, Silent Lab uh, deals with a lot of it. And there's a bunch of dark Pokemon that people don't know. They're weak to grass. So you are hitting and KOing that and KOing the next thing. And dark can't really keep up. There's, there's no, they just can't. So um, not only that, but if you deal with the dribbling, then you have to deal with the, with the jump off, um, and by the time you deal with the jump off, you might have to deal with the drip one again. So it's just, again, it's they're very very fast paced, and if you are able to deal with both, then you have to deal with other Terra. So again, very strong. Um, it, it's it's a deck that can deal with everything. So I'm I'm really happy that um, I think more people are gonna start playing this deck, and it's gonna be a deck that. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if people start complaining about this deck particularly. Yeah. I, I like the idea of the festival kind of package since it's it came out and um, the last set. And I just wish that Diplin allowed you to use TMs because if it, if it could use the TMs, it would just be so much better. Right. Which like maybe is a pretty good design, but it does, doesn't help its case for inclusion, a lot of other lists, like if you're going in a more spread oriented list, you can use the jump bluff to kind of, you know, use blindside multiple times. And we'll talk about that here in a second as well. But the Diplin having the caveat that it needs to actually have the attack on the card uh, does kind of diminish its value a bit. But again, do the wave is a really good attack, um, which can help you kind of in and out of some tough situations. So again, I really, really like this card. I really, really like this list. I've been meaning to test these lists. And if you guys are noticing too, you can always tell pellet lists. Like we've, we've talked about this before, like different players kind of leave their marks on their list. And we talked about optimal cards all the time, but I'm a strong believer in like optimal play styles. Like if, if something fits you and you know that, like keep doing that thing that's found you success. And pellet, when I look at a list of yours, I always see like Pokemon communication is a card that you see, which again I know is a, is a is a staple in a lot of your grass builds here. But you can kind of see greens too. You don't play a lot of basics like that's kind of your flexible setup supporter. So it's it's just interesting to see what a pellet list looks like as we kind of go through the three or four we've seen today. Yeah, for sure. So so the all three decks that we talked about so far, which are main lists, they're all variations of the same deck. So you're gonna see. Um, in 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 at least in in, in these builds, um, and I have we're gonna talk about like other decks that I that I've made, but for for these ones, the Festival Groove, Dangerous Mucus, and the Elusive Feather, they all come from the same route, right? So you're gonna see me doing the same thing, and I think it's because I'm very comfortable with those cards because I it's the most experience that I have in many scenarios, so I can talk for hours about. Why I think Green is really strong. Why I think um, you know uh, communication is really strong, because in these builds, uh, as long as I have a Torterra and as long as I have a Beedrill, these are cards that I'm probably going to add because they're just very strong. All right, this list is a deck we actually talked about last week, so we won't get into it too much. But we got to talk about when we're talking about kind of these fringe playable decks and maybe calling this deck a fringe playable deck is wrong because i think this deck is pretty strong but we've got the tanky build that we talked about in our tanky episode of grass and grass does have some of the best tank options just because you have hp boosters you've got damage reduction you know levani reduces damage by 40 which is just huge like spread is never getting through levani and then if you pair this with a torterra that can take some damage like you might have to two or three shot it 
Then you've got Krikatoon that boosts HP by 40. You've got the new Bramble Gas that gets more HP based on the prizes your opponent has taken. So, you know, 50, and you can, your opponent can take five. So I think you're looking at adding maybe up to 250 more HP to your Bramble Gas at certain points in the game. And then you've got some pretty good basics. And in this build right here, you know, you don't see Zarud, you see Tropius, you see Iron Leaves, but Shining Genesect is there too. So this is a really cool cool and interesting build pellet any thoughts anything we didn't touch on already no i think i think you you practically hit everything i think this is um um for those of of you who really enjoy like tanky builds and really like boxing this is a great build um, i think more people should play this list in my opinion because um you have things like the sharon and you know you have things like the you know so the, the two main players here cricket tune and Levani, because they like like you said you're cre you're sort of creating boss monsters right you're, you're sort of creating these boss monsters so that i don't even want to think about like having a you know 300 hp ramble glass with Levani and cricket tune on the field i don't want to even think about it it's just too ridiculously strong Ooh, just play um, hex just play one hex all that's yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess um, you could, and, and, and that's the good thing about the, the deck, right? There's always going to be something that people are going to say in your arguments to completely destroy your arguments. And I think that's what make the, makes decks not OP or not bandworthy, because there is always something that you could do to just fix that problem. And Hex Maniac is one of those parts. Yeah. So I'm really happy that you have a card where everyone that everyone can use that makes the list, you know, not as strong. But again, you still have that Torterra, right? You still have that Gensect. You still, those cards can still come back. You know, Bramble Gas gets stronger as the, the game goes on and progresses. So if you get a Hex and you KO it, that's fine. But, you know, they, you're looking at the list. It's got cave, it's got revitalizer, it's got super rod, that thing is coming back. So you better have a mercy seeker ready and you have better have cards in your hand because it gets to the point where you want to either play Hex Maniac or play your game, right? Mm -hmm. Or you might have to play Hex Maniac or you're not gonna be able to play it. Yeah. So very cool. This is something that I think more people should play. Um, it deviates from, from the real sort, it's all basics. You can definitely make it your own and like play things like Vigor or there's other cards that we're gonna talk about where you can you know speed up your your your, your energy um, into your Pokemon and I think it's a this is one of those decks that I think it's one of those staple decks in my opinion it should be like a staple deck that people should definitely try out um, and um, very very strong deck Shadows to Subject. Um, great build. Very, I'm a huge fan of this. I'm a huge fan of Tanky Grass too. I tried it earlier on in my days when I wasn't as skilled. And if you know, if you're not doing certain things right, they can feel kind of bricky because I do find myself when you focus a lot on setup. Sometimes you you know discard a card. It's going to get you more cards. Like these cards or these decks do want like multiple cards in hand to be able to like, you know, use tools effectively while also drawing forward. And so I found myself struggling with that at certain times. And, you know, I think now that I'm a better player, I think it's maybe time to return to decks like these and try them out again. Here's um, another really cool build. And I, w I think these decks are a little undersold. And so I'm glad that we got JD's list up here too. JD, a full grip games guy, uh, has a lot of really cool grass builds. You know, if you don't know what Spicy Peppers is, check out that build. It's another, I don't want to say rainbow grass build, but it's a fire-centric grass build that's playing that Scovillian. And then, of course, Arvin's name in French is Peppers. So that's where the deck kind of gets its name. So it's a really, really cool kind of name for a deck on top of having some cool uh, synergies and getting to play like Mela and stuff. So this is yeah. So this is JD's um, list that he was able to win with um, on the last on on full group games a while back. I think he won with this like what two weeks ago. Yeah, I believe. 
Yeah, saw, uh, saw it all displayed on Twitter. Very, very strong list. He calls it. I actually talked to him uh, a little bit. He calls it the fastest grass deck of the West. I don't know what that's about, but uh, very strong, very strong deck. Um, another another way, right, to move past the Rillasaur build. Um, very strong. You have Sharon and Altagos. One gets you uh, energies to your hand. The other one gets you energies into your Pokemon. And again, it's just a, it's a stage one fast deck where it's a beatdown deck. You just evolve and immediately just start attacking. So if your opponent can't keep up, that's their problem. So very linear, but very strong. Yeah. And you don't really expect grass to come out and punch you in the face, too. You normally you're like, oh, I've got some time. They got to get all these stage twos up and running. But like when you have Cherim and Eldegoss going and you're searching up two energy and then attaching two energy, plus you maybe have like Arvin to grab Professor's uh, Letter to grab you two more energy and you're attaching four energy to Tapu Bolu and turn two of the game, like things can spiral fast. And so you see that with a deck like this. It's really cool. Again, you've got Raihan, which is a card that's just really good in this style of deck. Just make sure you keep churning out attacks. Just really love this list. I personally have not had much of a chance to play it, but this is a grass deck that if I was going to point someone to a competitive build outside of Rillasaur, like something you could take to your LGS or something you could even take to a regionals event, have a ton of fun and win some games, this is it. And obviously JD has showcased that it, it can win against some of the best GLC players on the planet, taking down full group games, which we all know is a super competitive although i do know that they do have some fun there it's probably like as right now probably one of the places that we're getting the most data about what meta looks like right because they have 20 people out per night it's probably the largest locals in the world in terms of gym leader challenge maybe brazil could maybe throw that um their hat into the ring there a bit too but yeah this is definitely a good deck piloted by a skilled player into a group of skilled players yeah for sure for sure all right, this is a cool deck, this next one here, Lucky Clover. And you've been teasing us, Pellet, about this deck. You know, you've been like, it's coming, Lucky Clover is coming. You mentioned Lucky Clover, and everyone's like, what is Lucky Clover? Tell us about this. So, so I actually have, so I have a bunch of ideas for, for grass. And, um, again, I've been actually working on all the gems, so I've been working on, like, um, just um, uh, fighting and, and water and just, you know, trying to like spread out from grass so I can bring back what I learned from other gyms and like implement them here. Because like you said, like um, sometimes you get used to like a certain style and you like try not to like move past that, but it's very healthy to do it because you, you get to grow as a player. Um, so one of the builds that I've been, First of all, this build was purely for casual. So whenever we play against people that are new in our locals, we always try to play something that's a little easier, you know, to play against, a little more fun, so that they have fun and then they can get slowly into the more competitive uh, environment. So at the beginning, we start. I started playing this build because it doesn't get any fun. More you don't say casual as much as you know, whatever we th you think about coin flipping, right? Because in theory, you can just coin flip all tails and, it, you know, it, there is a world where that can happen. Um, but then I started playing this deck more and more with friends and then, you know, other friends. People were starting to, like, complain about the deck. Like, well, that deck is just it's starting to be, like, really, why is it so good? And then other people, like, jumped in and say like it's easy you just do this and then they they would lose and they're like what the what, what's happening why are we losing to coin flip so i start slowly started looking at the deck from a fun you know just casual deck that i just play with newer players to i really think this deck can actually win and i was able to get like top four not long ago with the deck um um and it's just been amazing. So the, the deck, the, the 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 way the deck works is by playing Pokemon that do a, a lot of damage, 
but you require a little luck by your side, right? And you require it requires you to to get some heads. Um, you, you need to uh, you know to flip some heads, and um, you play things like Toad Scroll, um, which has the attack triple smash. So you flip three coins, and then for each head you do eighty damage. You play the Uh for two energies. You do um, you know you flip three coins as well, and you do seventy. And then you play the the the, the famous uh, Bramble Glass, um, and I'm sure I'm butchering butchering the name, uh, but it's again it's a it's a coin flipping card. Um, the, I, it's one of the strongest cards in the deck. I didn't play it because you see it a lot in Realosaur, so I wanted to like showcase all their Pokemon. Um, Toast Scroll. I, again, I started playing the deck because I wanted to play Toast Scroll because I have a, I have a really cool. Uh, 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 shiny Toad School, so I'm like, oh, maybe I can build a deck around this, and that's how the deck started. But it's strong because um, I realized that with Rillaboom and Ball Beats, you have very strong um, uh, first turns. So in this format, we are getting to the point where everyone wants to go second. Absolutely everyone. So I started noticing if I win, if I would win a coin, Right, I would most likely would tell my opponent to go first, not because I didn't like going first, but because I know they hated it. Okay, because you're because usually in Lucy Feather you want to go first. Um, but then I started to when Bulby came out, so this new card called Bulby, um, you can you get you can get to attack on your first turn and. You get two basics into into your bench, right? So you can immediately start setting up with things like Turwick or with uh, with um, uh, Grookey, and it just started being very strong because you go first, you attack with ball beats. There's multiple ways. So you have switch, you have balloon, you have you know floatstone, you have your adventure bag to get to your floatstone on your things. You have escape rope. You have many many ways to get to your to your Bulby plays, and oh, you also have um, uh, you know a bunch of Pokeballs. You have Bug Catcher, which we haven't really talked about, but it's a great addition to Grass. So it's either for you know I've already played like maybe twenty games with the deck. You either get the Bulby play or you get exactly what you need in your bench. Um, and then yeah, it's really easy to just ramp up damage. Um, is you even if you attack and you only get one head, you're doing 80 damage. So you're KOing every, almost every single basic, um, which is really strong. But then if you get things KO at the beginning, so you get a slower start, then you they have to deal with reversal energy and things like that. But what's really cool about the deck is that it plays things like um, um, tricky coin. And woods, which allow you to reflip those coins. So instead of flipping three coins, you're flipping six coins, and you are at least getting two heads, right? A hundred percent. But what's really cool about the deck is that you have the ability. You have a lot of recovery cards, um, so and you're gonna use them. You are for a hundred percent gonna use them. Uh, but you also have a colorless because it, it deals well with both school. You can play it on Beedrill, you can play it on Torterra, you can play it on uh, Bramble Gas, you can play it uh, even on Bulbeat, right? Because Bulbeat, um, if Illumines is on the field for a double colorless, you're doing 80 damage. So there's been games where I set up with Bulbeat. I go again, I just keep attacking with Bulby while I set up my Torterra, my Bramble Gas, my Beedro, everything. And Bulby takes, you know, two or three prizes. And we've seen it in, um, you, you, you play Perry, you, you've seen it, uh, I'm sure you've seen Waddle play. Um, and you've seen Waddle take two or three prizes with uh, Whimsicott with Muscle Band, which is ridiculous, right? Um, so... So it's definitely so 80, 80 is a really good number, and uh, the fact that again you with Toad Scroll and Ramble Gas two heads that's a hundred and sixty. That's just incredible damage. Um, and then with Zarud, you get you know 
let's say you get two, right, or one, that's 70 or 140. That's still really good damage. But what's cool about having a, uh, a basic that with low energy cost, you do so much damage, it's the fact that you can, you know, you can do Rillaboom, Zarud in the field, play Zaru, uh, Rillaboom's ability, attach two energies, do 140. If it gets KO, you can just do either any of the rods or um, uh, just any recovery card, put it on the field, play Rillaboom again, you have another Zarud. So it's just very simple in my way, uh, in my opinion. And also, there's not a single person in the pond that's going to get mad because you beat them with, with a coin flip in there. You know what I mean? Like, there's, you can't get mad at that. That's because it doesn't, it doesn't get any more fun than that. And I have players that, uh, that built the deck and they're having a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, it's just uh, I enjoy playing something new. Like you said, there's still, you can still see my personality on the deck. It's got Torterra, it's got Beedrill, it's got um, Apricor Maker, and it's got that um, uh, Pokemon Communication, right? So those are like the four, the, the four um, cards that I keep going back into into my 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 list. I don't have a green, so I changed that for teammates because we we are playing. Um, uh, there there were many scenarios where green just um, just didn't cut in this deck. Uh, but those four keep coming back because they um, they have a lot of synergy. Obviously, you with those, with um, Pokemon communication, you want to like um, reduce your hand size while also getting exactly what you need. Um, and then having the Beedrill plays and Evercom Maker is just it's a worse uh, ball guy, but it gets it just thins your hand for the Beedrill and Grotto plays. So I realize that as long as I am getting what I want. And I'm playing the game. I don't care if I lose because I was able to at least enjoy the game. And I think that's the biggest problem that I have with Rillasaur is that there, even though I 100% think Rillasaur might be the better deck, there are many times where I get to I don't get to play the game because I just didn't have the correct cards. So I'd rather lose and get my ass wiped um, and enjoy, you know, seeing my opponent more boxing it out. Then just not I'm losing because I wasn't able to play the game. So that's my mindset. Um, but just very cool to just play something different. Um, and I'm I'm excited to to see how you know uh, Grass is one of those gyms that they love coin flipping cards. So I'm sure there's going to be other cards that um, we're going to see. And there's ways to make this like uh, cons more consistent. Because there's a Maractus that does the same thing as a and I'm sure you've seen it. Mm -hmm. And you could you could definitely switch out to the Toad Scroll or um, the Heracross that we talked about. Um, or you can you know just play other like a strong basic and um, and because you have Amber Glass, you could make and you have Torterra, you could in a way also add um, the Cricketune to make this list a little tankier. So there's there's ways to make it a little more competitive, um, and and for sure it's for what I've already seen with my friends, it definitely has potential to win, and it's just a f it's just something fresh and, and and nice to have. So so yeah, so anyone who wants to build it, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm sure that after you know getting a bunch of tails, we might break the deck apart but it's just it's just part of it but it's it's fun when you get two or three and it's just you know getting uh getting three heads on a waylord and KOing that it's best feeling ever nice yeah that's that would be sweet that's the dream right there right um <laughs> this is a, a deck that i've you know i ordered cards for it um a while ago i can't remember who it was i want to say dead maniac Maybe Jaboingus. I know I'm saying people's names like you all know who they are. These are just people that are up in the, the Cardboard Warriors Discord that had kind of like some similar ideas. The Maractus that you mentioned is a card that I ordered after seeing someone's list. So I have this deck kind of put away to put together. I just always find myself with a different grass build. And Coin Flips and I aren't friends. Uh, one of the first things that jumped out to me in your list right here, Pella, is in the Coin Flip deck, no timer ball. 
Um, yes. <laughs> which I uh, love that you were able to catch that. I actually didn't want to mention it. Uh, I actually say it on my deck profile that I have uh, that we're going to be posting soon. Um, and I think it's hilarious because I I usually play Timer Ball in my grass builds, and I didn't play um, any Timer Ball in this build. I actually, it, it almost feels like we rehearsed this, but uh, we didn't. And it's it's hilarious that you, um, you mentioned it. And the real reason, if I'm being totally honest, was because you get... You already have, so it's it's not the same feeling to flip tails on items than to flip tails on an attack. Because I don't know, at least for me, it just feels really funny when I flip all tails because hitting for zero is just hilarious. But getting tails on a timer ball really hurts. Like you, there's a little salt salt there. So because I already have to deal with a lot of coin flipping. I decided to, you know, uh, I, I, I'm already going to flip for many of these attacks. So I might as well, you know, I want to make sure that I, I get that growl. <laughs> you know, I want to make sure that I get that Beedra. Gotcha. Not not a full gambling man, just a little bit. So I just thought that was hilarious here. Um, another cool thing that I thought was really interesting is, you know, you have Toad Scroll and you have Zarud both kind of highlighted here as key cards in the deck. And both of them, like you said, they have these huge coin flip attacks. But I'm a huge fan of their one energy cost attacks just being like disruptive. Um, right. while also putting some damage on the board. Again, Eerie Tentacles here moves an energy from the active to the bench. Like, how annoying is that for players yeah. while also putting 30 damage? And then you get the Zarud, and I actually was looking at the Zarud not for its second attack. Obviously, the second attack is pretty sweet, but I was looking at it for its first attack when I first saw it spoiled a little while ago. Um, you know, you get to switch your opponent's bench with their active. And then it does 20 damage. So it's kind of a cute way if you're trying to like stall and put damage on something. Again, it's just like boss muscle band to a certain degree. Um, you know, interesting cards that kind of just like can play into this while you're setting up game plan. You know, they're not terrible starters and then they can get hit huge damage later on. So really cool. I like this build a lot. I got to get coin flipping. <laughs> All right, how many more lists we got? We got two more lists. All right, let's get to it. So we got uh, this list right here. Again, I mentioned spread decks is something that I've just been trying to do with grass since like I started playing the game. You know, this is these builds and these iterations have just kind of like gone all over the place. And you know, part of the problem with them is sometimes they're just Torterra decks, and we we brought that up a lot. That sometimes the best thing about other grass decks is they just get to be Torterra decks. So this grass deck has a couple different options that you can go with. And one of my favorite grass cards is this the X and Y promo Celebi that has a pretty cool Delta ability. Basically, if it gets KO'd, you get to um Sorry, it's Delta ability, I think it's barrier, is that it can't be affected by like special conditions and effects of attacks. And then its ability is really cool. If it gets KO'd, you get to flip a coin. If it's heads, you shuffle it and all cards attached to it back into your deck and you deny a KO. So on top of all of those, it's got a couple of good things. The 70 HP basic with free, uh, one retreat, actually. Uh, it has the sparkle motion attack, which is also just a sweet attack to announce. And it does 10 damage counters, not damage, but damage counters to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So it's a really cool card to help you get spreading. You've got the Galvantula that newly got released into the wild because we got a grass printing of Joltik that for one energy does the double threat attack 30 to two places. And it does, in fact, count weakness and resistance. So really good into those water matchups. Then you've got Hisuian Lilligant, which is one of your other early spreaders. For double colorless, it's 20 to everywhere on your opponent's side, but it has to switch to the bench. So you'll see it paired with Lily's Pokedoll and Robo's Substitute here by Z-Man Cuddles. And then you've just got some other pieces to kind of help you with consistency. You've got Roserade to help you out. You've got Grottle. And then you've got kind of two finishers here. You have the Decidueye that for a double colorless is going to do... 80 to the active, and then 80 to another bench Pokemon that has damage counters on it, which if you've done your job right, is everything. And then you have the Dust Tox that takes an extra prize, which you're probably going to pair with Blindside 
over something like its normal attack, which only does 50. Um, but you see you're playing double energies in your energy suite. You got DCE, you got twin energy, you got reversal, and you have counter energy because they just pair really well with what else you're trying to do. And of course, you've got the jump bluff that can attack twice. And if you use that jump bluff in conjunction with the blindside TM, it's also going to do major damage, taking double prizes. So a really cool build. I've just always found it to be a little bit short when I'm trying to play it. Is that what you feel too, Pellet? Um, okay, so I'm going to be totally honest with you. I actually haven't had, um, I haven't been able to play this particular build mm -hmm. um, that much. Um, there is there is a couple of things that I probably would test. I don't know if I've already seen and Cuddles already like tested them. And this is like um, uh, a newer version of the deck. Because again, I'm, I'm seeing the TMs, I'm seeing body um, body pop and the reversal. So you can, you can immediately tell the deck has been updated. Um, but I know jump bluff spread is a thing. And um, it's, not, it's not a card that we, that we're going to talk about today, um, but we because we already talked about scrolls and we already talked about like jump off a couple times. But you know, you have things like scroll of swirls and scroll skies, and I think it's swirls the one that gives you the ability to like do double spread, which is very strong. Um, so I don't know if that's a thing that he would play here because you know, mid to late game, I feel like he has the ability to take you know two or three prices and then everything is also like beaten down to the point where docs does uh dust talks only has to do 20 and just get two two prices so, and again we have to terror so in theory i feel like this deck should work in my opinion i think this particular deck is going to depend very heavily on the item and supporters that you add to the deck um this is just again my uh what i think whenever when, when, I, when i see this list i immediately can tell that it's the seaman cuddles has definitely put a love into a lot of love into it and i feel like this is version god knows what so there's definitely been a lot of trial and error in this build also, like shout outs to Seaman Cuddles. Like, if there's a man that can that can that, that cooks decks, is this guy. Like, I every time that I like when I was doing this presentation, Mill, Jump Off, Lucy Feather, freaking Rainbow, he has everything. He has tried everything. He has a deck for everything. Unfortunately, if if it would have been funny if all the decks that I made in this presentation was all was all semen semen coddles lists because he literally has a list for everything so um not only that he has he has other lists for other gyms so it's not like he's a player that only plays rap so he has a lot of experience so I'm not, I'm not doubting a lot of his choices at all um and i know he plays things like the lily and the, uh, the robot because I believe Lilligan uh, comes back, right? So I think that Lilligan, when it attacks, comes back. So it has really good synergy with it. Um, and I really like, we're going to talk about that specific um, Rowlet. And that Rowlet, that Rowlet right there, not only is it the prettiest Rowlet in all GLC, in my opinion, but it has a really scary attack that in the future wouldn't be surprised if you got banned. So um, very similar to, to Weedle's attack. Um, so I think the idea is really nice, and I think people should definitely like keep looking into this um, whole deck, like the deck as a whole, because it has a lot of like important key aspects into the deck that are going to be very important to building something in the future. I think Grass is very close to making a spread as good as Lightning. It just needs something else. Because Lightning is very, 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 very solid right now. But I think we have things like that Galvantula. I think we have that Dostox that is very similar. You know, it, it can take two prices, and that's huge. 
Um, unfortunately, it is a stage two, right? So it's definitely hard to, to pull out. But we also have that jump up that can do a lot, of, a lot of sprint damage. And we have things like reversal energy. So falling behind is not going to be a problem. And then when you think about cards like Iono, and Judge, Ace Trainer, Roxanne, these are all cards that are game changers, right? So if you play them in the right scenario after hitting something, you know, like a supporter card, right? Like you, you KO that Frost Moth or you KO that, um, you know, um, that Life Heart or you KO that important supporter that is keeping the the deck you know in the game in their favor you know the tables can turn very quickly so um in my opinion last thing that i have to say about this deck is this is a deck to uh, keep on the lookout i think it's a deck that as time goes on and we get something else for spread this is going to be one of those decks that is going to emerge from the shadows like lightning spread did um and i think it's going to be a very very decent that galvantula is very scary for 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 water yes water has um has um manaphy right but um you know people just got they just got rid of the manaphy because of the raikou so the fact that they now have to like worry about like you know lightning spread and this galvantula hitting for like six dude 60 two of your pokemon that's crazy that's huge that is so much now imagine i don't know if you put a muscle band in that do you do 50 to do you do um you don't right because it's only to the active yeah okay, yeah that would that'd be insane but 60 is still super it's super huge like um and a lot of these uh older basic uh water pokemon are on that 60 um hp range so they're slowly getting 70 hp right we got the remor eight that's 70 hp we got you know we still got like the squirtle that's like immediately like spread but all it all you you only need you know to hit maybe once with the with the celebi and just a silent lava way to like KO that so it's it's scary i think this is a cool deck and i'm gonna be on the lookout for this deck it's just very interesting and shout out to Seaman Carlos. Um, very cool ideas. Yeah. Uh, after I started playing Meganium decks, the first deck that I picked up was this deck. Um, again, like Meganium decks weren't working out for me. I didn't want to play Real Sore. It was this deck. And I've been playing it probably more than any other deck I've played throughout the last two years, like even more than Hitmon Bros, which is a deck that I get like people talk to me about a lot of times. Oh, wow. but, so this is spread you're talking, so you're talking like, about spread, like, like yeah grass spread specifically and uh -huh. like like his swing lily gant is a card that i really really tried to make work like I don't know, there's probably like a video of me playing it like back like like early 2023 it was like right before ptcgo got banned because i finally got the celebi on ptcgo which is okay. was a rather expensive card to get i remember were you playing scrolls were you playing I, scrolls I, was, I was playing scrolls back then but i've I settled on, I went to my locals, and the, the first time I didn't get a badge at locals, I was playing this deck, uh, a very okay. similar list to Z-Man Cuddles, and I, it went down to the wire, I went 2-1, lost to the Psychic deck that ended up winning, my opponent did have to get Guzma three times, it was, they had to play Guzma three times, boss, and they had to use Escape Rope, because I kept using his Swing Lilligant to set up numbers, and I had... Uh, just a joy ready for the win, and it just ended up that they just had to keep switching me out to to get the win. So they did play that game really, really well. But I just I think that if there's one deck more than any other deck that has frustrated me on any sort of like level, it is grass spread. And I keep coming back to it because I just love it so did you have, much. Did you play Govantula like so that? Or? I, I didn't play so the last time I played it, this was probably like maybe a month ago. Um, I didn't play Galvantula. Like I had the Galvantula. I was trying to do it. I the differences between Z Man's list and mine were I'm not playing the Dust Stocks. I am playing the Beautifly um, because I really like the the draw. The draw gives power. You. Yeah, yeah, the Stokes Stokes draw. And then I wasn't playing the Galvantula, which let me kind of go down on Pokemon because he's playing 18 Pokemon here, which I have played in the past with Spread, but it's one, been one of those frustrating things. You even notice here, I don't think that Z-Man is playing Dark Tricks in their list. 
and they're purely going for rare, rare candy decidui, which I love. Again, Z Man cooks, and I love his list. Um, so it's it's interesting to see that um, that aspect of the deck. I was playing the Dark Tricks, uh, but going down on the Galvantula. We don't really have a lot of water at my locals. It, it pops up here and there, but. I didn't feel like the Galvantula is what I wanted to, to wanted to play that that time. So I've tried again. I've tried so hard. I love Grass Spread. Please keep playing it, everyone. It is a wonderful list. It's got some really cool plays. You mentioned the Rowlet, like you can Bird Keeper it up into the active, and then its attack costs are free. So it's just like a really cool that Sky Circus attack or ability is really cool. And Bird Keeper is one of my favorite cards, and it's just so on point with the Rowlet too. But just really struggle. How much, does, uh, how much does Lilligan do? Does it do 20? It, it does 20. So what ends up being kind of cool here is that, you know, you attach that double colorless and it does 20 to everything, switches to the bench, and then your opponent, you know, takes out one of these, you know, dolls that ends up activating your teammates. But for just one more energy, it's doing 100 damage. So that actually mm -hmm. comes up way more than you think about is its second attack. Um, obviously, you're playing it for that first attack, but that second attack is actually really super useful, um, and it's a card I really, really liked. It just takes a lot to get going, but again, I don't want to talk bad about the list, because it is a list that I really, really love. It's, it Sometimes it just breaks and dies. <laughs> but, gotcha. Yeah. But I love the list, so again, play it, play it, play it, and Z-Man's list is, is much different than mine, but still a very cool list. All right, this last list I know very little about. This is a Lost Zone Beatdown deck. And these are some cards you don't see very often. Obviously, some of them we've talked about a ton already. You know, we've talked about the Scovillain. We've talked about Torterra a ton. We've talked about that new Galvantula that needs the energy attached to it. But now you've got some Lost Zone synergies between Shift Tree and Jump Plop. And you're going to see some of those cards kind of find their way into your deck, too, that have other Lost Zone um, synergies like Lost Blender, Lost Vacuum, which I just think is a really good card. You've got Lost City, Coerce's Experiment. This deck is even playing Mirage Gate, which is a card you never see play. So this is some spicy, spicy tech. But you've got Jump Pluff here, whose Lost March attack is one energy. It does 20 times the uh, amount of Pokemon, except Prism Stars, which aren't things, uh, in your Lost Zone. And so that's really cool. You even got Lost City here, um, hoping that maybe you're Lost Zoning some of your opponents and maybe they're Lost Zoning some of your Pokemon, because it does count both your Lost Zone and your opponent's Lost Zone for that. And then you've got Shiftry here, whose Tearing Gust attack is just one energy for 210 damage, which is a super awesome rate but of course you're putting that pokemon and all attached cards in the lost zone so for that one attack you're putting shiftry and all its evolutions into the lost zone and then of course jump bluff is going to probably follow up that attack um, and hopefully there are other mons for also another huge damage so really cool really interesting list pellet what are your thoughts on this one yeah so this is one of those um uh lists that you uh, I, I I don't really I didn't really like try building because uh, um, I I was really more interested in like uh, like after making this this um, presentation some of my favorites was definitely like the tanky one definitely like the a spread uh, the there were other some there were some really cool ones that I was able to like explore a little more but this lost zone one is one of those. It, it's so crazy in my work kind of ideas and again it's one of those ideas that it's just it's out there it's an electric uh, deck that you can build um and it has some really good potential this shift tree there's I, I i have a lot of friends that are fans of shift tree um and this one energy for 210 is really really strong but the the fact that you can also like paralyze your opponent with um uh spinnerack while also like um you know making this jump off stronger and stronger um it's really cool i i definitely think um uh the deck sh will get better um as we get maybe more you know lost zone 
cards because I feel like this Lost Zone mechanic was sort of like new introduced, newly introduced. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we get some more things about like uh, that has to do with like Lost Zone. Um, so this deck has like potential in the future to do a lot of damage, but it's a beatdown deck, and it's um, what's cool about the deck. I don't know what he's not playing. I'm not sure what he's playing counter energy and not the reversal energy. Uh, I'm I don't really know. I think reversal is definitely like the one that you should be playing, unless I'm completely missing something here. No, I think you, I think you're mostly right. I see all evolution attackers. I don't see a single single basic attacker. Yeah, so um, I'm not yeah. sure. Might just but, be an um, oversight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it, again, the, the 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 deck becomes really strong in many scenarios because with reversal energy, that Scoville and I think it's been like 180. The, the Galvantula is also hitting for massive amounts of damage. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he. I think you could play reversal and counter energy in this in this list, and it's a list that you can slowly, um, you know, always be boxing with, and um, uh, and it's got some really interesting cards that you usually don't see, um, and it's one of those decks that it's just a, a a new idea, something fresh, something new, new strategy. You know, you're trying to put things on the on your lost zone to like power up your your other moms and um like i said it, it might just need one or two other cards to um to make the list actually like very strong so yeah shout outs to hypotenuse i think he um he's probably not the the one who started the list but um um I know there were multiple other people that have similar lists, so it's an idea out there that is in, it's interesting enough so that people might actually want to 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 play it. So if this is your cup of tea, you know it's it's out there and it's very very good. Uh, and again, you still have you still have that Torterra and that Rose Ray, so it, you know Torterra by itself is a monster, so you 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 you'll be fine. Yeah. Definitely, definitely a deck that can win a tournament. Right, that's where I want to get at. Yeah, and the thing I love most of this list is like after looking over it for a little bit, you notice that there's just the one recovery card. Like Hypotenuse is like you're going to Lost City my Pokemon whether you want to or not. Because again, you see Lusamine here; they want to get this Lost City into play. They want you to take KOs to put their Pokemon into the Lost Zone. So they're kind of you know conceding that fact with just the super rod they don't want to get anything back so i think one of the key things about just looking at this deck is obviously you're going to have to sequence your attackers you know if your pokemon are continuously getting lost cityed how good is torterra going to be in the late game if all your evolutions are gone so obviously you probably want torterra to be like one of your first or second attackers and you know giving up like a rosa raid is something that you don't really mind because you got value out of it um, and then hopefully you can come back in some other way. But this deck is really cool in that regard. I really, really, really like it. I want to see it in action. We might have to put this get list together myself um, just to try it out. But it seems really fun. And you can tell it's been updated recently. There's a Crispin in this deck. Um, so there is a Crispin in this deck. Yeah, that is really cool. So yeah, shout out to Hypotenuse and other Lost Zone grass enjoyers. A lot of people trying to make Lost Zone happen in different types. I've seen some people brewing with Lost Zone Lightning, which has a couple of cool cards here and there. There's like an Ampharos that discards energy to the Lost Zone to paralyze. There's a Raikou that does more damage based on energy. So some cool things going on. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Well, hey, those are kind of like the, the rogue list. And again, there's like an infinite amount of rogue list out there that we could talk about. We just didn't get a chance to talk about them today. Um, if you've got one to share and you just end up having to watch this on YouTube and you want to drop them in the the comment section, I'm sure everyone would love to check out your spicy grass brew. I've been wanting more people to drop lists in, in the YouTube channels. I don't know how it works. Obviously, we got Discord for those sorts of things. But, you know, it would be a cool way to kind of just share grass brews, people that are looking to try something outside of the realms of EF or Realisaur, just kind of like one place to kind of check out um, rogue grass brews. Let's make this that place. Um, of course, hey, is that everything? 
And Pella, you've included some cards here that you see as having some potential for builds in the future. And so these are some really sweet cards. You've got Credilly here. So once during your turn, you flip a coin. If heads, you get to choose a status condition from Burn, Confuse, or Poison. And you get to uh, make the active that special condition. Uh, similar to that Loopy Lasso uh, Venusaur that we were talking about, a coin flip condition. Uh, similar to the Weeping Bell uh, Victory Bell, too, that you mentioned, too. This Cordillia is pretty sweet, especially in Poison builds, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, and again, the, the I have 12, so I uh, I put together 12 random Pokemon, right? Nothing special. It's not like these are like, you know, like a secret tech for, for grabs that no one has touched. Um, all of these cards have been touched in one, you know, one way or another. But the idea for this is that you've already seen all of these lists uh, that we, and I, you know, that we all uh, we put together, everyone in the community. But there's still so much that we haven't um, really touched upon. Even like all these lists, I can 100% guarantee you they're not not even close. They're not even at their full potential. Um, not a single one, not the Lucy Feather, not Lucky Clover, not, you know, uh, fastest uh, deck of the West, uh, not even Villasaur. There's always newer cards coming up. There's always, you know, uh, it's very uh, subjective to your locals. There's, there's just, there's not a perfect deck. It depends on, there's too many factors. So the idea of these next called slides is for you to, just pick your favorite. Dude. Pick your favorite and look at, you know, if, if it's Parasite, if it's Crotally, look at the different ones that they have printed and see if there is a way to make that work, right? Because we have enough where sometimes just splashing something works. And you're going to start splashing something, it's not going to work. And then you're slowly going to build around it and then it's going to work and it's going to make that card shine. Okay, it has happened. To, it happened to me by accident multiple times. So, um, for so for these cards, for example, Cradley, it's one of the recent cards that came out. Um, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I know there's a lot of people that are hungry for poison type uh, builds um, and status condition builds. So this is a great start. Has 150, does a lot of damage. Very pretty card as well. So sometimes the artwork is very important to players. So very pretty card. Um, very strong card as well. And you have things like the Ariados, you have things like the Venomoth, you have a Roserade, so you have a bunch of cards. Um, right? If, if you don't know exactly the cards that, um, that I'm talking about, look them up. Um, you're going to find them really quick immediately. And you can build a deck around it. And, you know, all you need is a Turtera, guys. All you need, <laughs> all you need is a Turtera. You should be fine. Um, and many of these cards, like look at this, look at this attack. One energy. Well, that's all you need. One energy. This attack does a hundred damage for each special condition affecting your opponent's active Pokemon. That's insane, dude. Like a hundred damage. That's just crazy. So that's a that's one, right? So poison or status condition is a, a deck that we didn't showcase here, but it's a, it's a potential. You have this parasect, this parasect for you flip a coin and then for each heads. You put a stage two into your field. That's ridiculous, right? So you can you can literally play just Venusaur, right? And then play anything else. And then if you flip one, let's say you flip one heads, just one, you have a Venusaur in the field. Even if it gets, you know, boss order or whatever, let's say it's it doesn't get boss order, right? You you're attaching two energy to turn, basically. Um and again, that's thinking about Venusaur on top of my head, but you can also put like Rillaboom or you could put like any other stage two that might not might not work on other decks. You could just have it there. You can play the shift three, right? That shift three, you can just play the shift three that does the lost zone shift three to do two ten. That's ridiculous, right? So again, Parasite is your favorite. There's there's a way to make to make that a deck. Um, we already talked about Sharon and Eldegoss, right? That's the one engine. We have the Beedrill engine. We have the Rillaboom and Venusaur engine, right? So we have multiple engines uh, running in grass. 
But in none of the decks, we talked about the fully blooming energy volume. Um, it's not, we, we didn't showcase it. Uh, there is people that have filled the decks, but a deck only gets good as the pilot gets better, right? So if you build something that's nice and you actually show in a tournament by placing, you, you don't have to win, but getting top three, top two, top one, that gets noticed, right? So you can play Viaplum and this card is really strong. You know, you evolve it. Um, there's things like the evolution. There's things like, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Gardenia's uh, Vigor, right? Where you can play and attach to energies. And you're not playing, you don't have to play Rulo. You don't have to play Venus. Or you can play your favorite. You can play Vileplum. Um, so it's another idea out there that you could definitely make your own um, um, and, and enjoy it, right? Uh, this spider, up for example, this card is garbage, okay? It's trash. But look at the attack. You can shuffle each player's active Pokemon and all attached cards uh, into the deck. So, for example, you play Waylord, right? They have to attach what? What is it? Uh, Jeffrey, like, what is it? Four energies? Five energies? Four energies, right? So they have this massive boss in their field. They have a Torterra. They have a Gosford. They have something that's very... They, you know, they wasted two, three turns to attach. Yes, there are exceptions. They can play, you know, um, Frost Mop and just immediately attach those four. But that's still, you know, it's still, you're still attacking with something and shuffling everything back. Spide Ops is not the only one that does it. There is a Whimsy card that does the same thing with the coin. Um, There's a Shiftery, because uh, I, I keep getting getting commented on the Shiftery. There's a Shiftery that for, I think it's one energy, or it might be double colorless energy, uh, shuffles, you pick three of your opponent's bench Pokemon and they shuffle the rest into their deck. And so, exactly. it, 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 so people love this effect and they're trying to make it work. So this might be another place. Yeah, exactly. So having a shuffle, you know, having your opponent have to like shuffle their things into the deck can get very annoying because you have, you're controlling, right, the tempo of the, of the um, of the of the field and on, uh, of the game, so these are these are ideas that are out there, and I haven't seen a single list, maybe one, but I haven't seen a single one shine, right? And that's what I'm saying. Whenever I talk about, when I'm talking about, like I haven't seen it, it's probably out there. Someone has made a deck out of every single card, but as long as if you don't show the how good it can get, and you don't do well with the deck. It's not like it's not gonna get noticed. It's just gonna be another random deck. So it's not until the deck does well in at least one really good tournament that people are gonna just, you know start saying like, hey, maybe there's something in here. Yeah. And start looking at it. And I'm hoping that's what you know, we talked about Twin Leaf earlier. I'm hoping that when when Twin Leaf gets open up and running and it's open beta for everyone, we you know we'll see an influx of GLC players on there trying these cards out, trying new things because you know. Playing at your locals, you might not want to brag about yourself winning your locals on the Tricky Gym Discord, you know, you, you know. But if you get a limitless result on an online tournament that's a Twin Leaf tournament, you know, that's there for everyone to see. Someone else is gonna brag, uh, you know, someone else is gonna want to brag on you and what you've done and check out your list. And so I think that will kind of bring some of these cards into the spotlight too. Um, again, we, we're really missing an online scene right now outside of webcam, and I'm hoping, hoping that that changes. Well, here's kind of the second list of some cards. You want to talk us through this superior to start us off? Yeah, so we got two. We, we, we're, we're almost done. We got two more slides. Um, we're going to go through them real quick. Nothing too crazy. So just like you have cards that have incredible good potential in the future or right now, you also have cards that um, aren't super, they're not like the best. But if they're the, your favorite, try them out. Like this example, I think this is the only card that I put here that, it's a one of the well, it's, it's just any there's always fans for starters. So the superior, for example, 140 HP. Um, it has free retreats if you attach an energy. You know, we, with with cards like reversal energy, now you can almost play anything if you fall behind. So playing this in like something like spread or something, uh, it's definitely like something you could do. Um, so uh, I believe uh, his second stage. 
I could be completely wrong, but I think it has an ability where if you evolve it, something gets paralyzed. I think that's the ability. Um, but again, something really cool that you could also play. With Buswell, um, Grass has Buswell. It's got Cartana. It's got Fermosa. And B-String is still a thing. I'm still, we, we, in, in Puerto Rico here, we, 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 are, we're, we aren't haters of um, uh, Ghost Lord. But it's because one of our best players is a dark player, and he constantly is saying, like, you know, this card is, has to get banned, or I'm going to keep winning tournaments because this card is ridiculous. And he talks about Beast Ring. He thinks Beast Ring is just incredibly strong. He doesn't think Guzzler should get banned. I don't think any of us believe that. But we do think that Beast Ring is just ridiculously strong. And in the future, right, more be, more um, Ultra Beasts are going to get released, and it could be a problem. Um, that's a topic for another day. But again, we haven't seen Beast Ring in Grass yet. So you have three three uh, Ultra Beasts, and we haven't seen a Beast Ring deck, right? So it's another possibility. This new area, though, so there's a, a lot of a lot of um, items, uh, a lot of stages that increases your um, you know your opponent's um, retreat cost. You have things like um, uh, Tangrowth that has they have attacks that have to do with your opponent's retreat cost. So playing this sort of deck, very heavy sort of deck, so that they can't retreat. And depending on how heavy they are and how tanky they are, they're going to receive more damage. That could also be a strategy. You have things like Hacturn, for example. There's a lot of you can play like Balloon, or you can play like these Pokemon where if they get hit, their opponents take damage, so they start thinking, should I hit, should I not hit? So some really cool strategies um, that are still out there. And again, these are very quick examples for you guys to know that, you know, there's still a lot of out there that you can try, and that's good. Yeah. All right. Last little bit here. Talk to us about these cards as well, Pelly. Oh. This is the last slide. Um, we already talked about Rowlets a little bit, right? Um, this card has the potential to eventually get banned just because of the ability. So if you play Bird Keeper from your hand during the turning, you are all energies. So similar to um, to the Sun Floor, right? If we eventually get an item that is completely broken, Rowlet could be a thing. And it might not even get banned because you still need to get the item, you still need to play Bird Keeper, you still need to, you know, there's still a lot of things and he's still a basic, right? So it might just be something really cool to to you know to be on the lookout. You have this Vivillion, which I really haven't seen anyone play. Very cool card, um, very underrated. But once during your turn, you may flip a coin, give heads, search your deck for a basic energy card, and attach it to one of your Pokemon, and then shut the door. All right, so it's an energy accelerator, uh, and then it also has something like Sleep Power, which always uh, it's always strong, right? Sixty damage, and your opponent gets to sleep, and you can play Reversal Energy. So. If, you know, Vivillion, I'm sure there's banners out there. Um, Durant, uh, very cool uh, card. I hope that we never get a mail deck in grass, please, for the love of God. But if we do, like, look at this. Uh, if this Pokemon has any damage counters, so that's that's very easy. Things like Rainbow Energy, for example. You can discard the top four cards of your opponent's deck, and this is DLC. So four cards is just a huge number. Uh, just too, too too big, and then we played this the CY, which with the ability to to, to snipe and um, um, you know there's a difference between spread and sniping, very similar but slightly different. Uh, so again, it's a it's it's another idea, and there's a really cool new CY that for one energy you can discard an energy does 170, which is ridiculous, right? And we haven't really seen that as a, that either. Um, so again. The whole idea of these three slides, very quick, uh, was to let you guys know there's still a lot, you know, that people haven't touched upon. People keep going back into the same thing because it's just easier. It does take a little, a, a lot to make a deck work, but it takes a lot longer to keep a deck and like up to date to the meta. Um, and I had to find out the hard way, right? So I took a break from a deck that I thought people were going to keep playing and they go, well, they were going to do the job for me. Um, and then the comment just kept being, hey, when's, when's the next update? Like, so it does take time um, and for, for players to update the list. And 
So analysts are going to take longer and they're going to take more time to, to keep getting updated. Um, but take your time and just pick your favorite. The, the game is already on a state where probably 70% of any Pokemon, um, of your favorite Pokemon, can probably get played. Yeah, I agree with that. And actually, you know, to touch on this Durant a little bit, the one of the Meganium lists that I talked about, the first Meganium list that I played that had ever won a tournament was playing this Durant. It was a control-based build, and it has some pretty sick synergies with, like, rainbow energy because it has damage counters on it. It discards four. So it, there, was, there was a Durant mill list back in the day, a grass list that did win a CBW tournament. It was pretty mean. I, I played it one time and said, no, thank you. We're going to play something nicer. Uh, but I, I really have not seen it resurface in a while. I bet Ghouls just has it under wraps and is waiting for all of us to to be unassuming, yeah. digging through our decks, playing Professor Researches, and him just drop this Durant on us, and we'll all be real sad. I think the, you know, mentioning this of a villain, too, I think that there is a, I think the pre-Evos even have, like, adaptive evolution. So I think you can evolve it immediately, if I'm not mistaken. At least one of its evolutions has the adaptive evolution ability, which lets it cheat on evolution for a turn. I know that there's, like, a Caterpie and Metapod to do that. So this Favillain might even be better. I might be wrong on that, but I think I do remember, or if not, a lot of grass Pokemon do get those printings. So that um, might yeah, be one of the you're, future. You're, you're right on the money. There is definitely a Favillain, uh, the, the, the previous evolutions, where you can literally evolve them all in the same turn. Yeah. So you can get a Pavilion on your first turn. Yeah, which you get, which seems like a pretty good free energy from turn, like almost like a backup Rillasaur, right? Because it's it's just yeah. one, but like that's pretty good, especially if you can get all those Pokemon going early. So again, cool cards, underrated cards, cards that we need to try out a little bit more. Um, and if you have been trying them out, again, drop those lists in the YouTube comments. We want to see it. That's it, man. That's We were in the weeds. We were talking grass. We were chomping away at the bit there. Get into all these really sweet, interesting grass decks and cards beyond what we're kind of used to seeing. You know, after all of that, I am really motivated to try more list outside of what I've been playing in the grass deck. Again, I still love my Meganium deck. It's going to be hard to pull that away from me, but, you know, Getting back into grass spread is always something I really want to do. You're trying out your your new elusive feather build that's more focused on status conditions as a card I'm really interested in trying out. So again, I always we finish these podcasts and then I get motivated to do the things, which is why I've got a metal tank deck over here. You know, Jim Leader Josh instilled some tankiness into me last week. You know, now I'm like, gotta get these grass decks going. Hell yeah. do, do you have any closing thoughts for us about grass? Yeah, no, I just wanted to say um Thanks again for, for, for having me. Um, this was a, a long episode, but I hope it, um, you know, it's not like everyone has to like listen to the whole episode uh, in one go. Just break it down little by little. Um, but I hope you guys, um, you know, learned a lot. Um, and I hope you guys can put your, your videos on the comments um, and your, you know, your lists. Um, that's something that we really want to see. And, and not, not for us, but um, more importantly for other people that, are trying to build something different. Um, for me, I think it's going to be, uh, I've been, for the last couple of months, I've been testing a lot and building a lot. And now with the new season, uh, we're going to be playing a lot. So we're going to be in the more competitive, um, in a more competitive mode and just playing with, you know, with the new meta and we're, we're we, we, we're going to start our season pretty soon, so so we're definitely going to be updating a bunch of these decks. Um, we have a new we have new rules in our in our um, in our locals. So we have we're we're implementing not only the sub um, um, typings that we discussed last time in the episode, but we're also you get perks as a player. The more and more you 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 uh, you win. So you, there's actually, as you win with the same deck, you can get like uh, perks to like steal badges from other players and other some really cool stuff. Um, and in order to do that, you need to win um, with, mul with, with the same deck, uh, well, with the same gym multiple times in order to get some of those perks. So you, you don't get badges, so you get, you, you get behind on those badges, but you got perks to do some really cool things as you keep playing. 
So one, so I'm definitely playing, you know, I'm gonna try to get my my perks with definitely, you know, uh, Dangerous Mucus. I'm 100% playing your Meganium deck. So freaking amazing build. Um, and then, um, you know, I'll, I'll probably try to, uh, I really enjoy the, the, the spread deck, the tanky grass. Um, uh, I'm not crazy enough to play ghouls, uh, egg meal build that's I need too, too much time and practice, but, um, but we're definitely going to be in like more of a competitive aspect. And I, I really think I really, I literally wake up every day and like check like my, uh, Poke Beach or, or alpha, uh, groups to see if like we got some new grass types coming up. Um, so, so yeah, I hope that you guys. Uh, get to build your grass builds. There's more out there than Villasaur. Villasaur is good. You can start playing Villasaur to like get ahead of, to to start playing the game. But trust me, there's just more to it. Um, and um, you know, I I, I I really appreciate the uh, the you know me having you having me here and and I hope that next time for the next episode, right? But um, uh, who knows? When that's gonna be, I hope that I can bring you guys like uh, more competitive builds, but not too much of variations, but just completely different builds um, for grass that you know that we can literally say this has been tested, it's proven, it's good. There is no wiggle room, you know. Try it; it's amazing because of this, 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 and this. So, so hopefully the next, right, the next video could be about like car decks that are a hundred percent as good as Rillasaur, and that has that you know we're gonna be able to maybe show the the deck and the results, right? So decks that that uh, that have a backpack of results and and can show why they are the best. Okay, so hopefully, right, that's. I'm gonna to try to 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 have that as the next assignment.